Uh, welcome back to We Watch the Movie, guys. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And we are back in the asshole, the saddle again. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Liberty. <laughs> liberty. God, I hate that commercial. <laughs> Beeple. It's, oh. it's the stupidest sounding baby ever. Throw it in the ocean. It's not, it's not real. <laughs> All those insurance covers. Like you don't watch a lot of sports, dude. But I'm telling you, like during NFL season, you get so sick of certain commercials that when they come on, they just, make, especially if your team's losing, it just makes you want to rip your skin hole off. I don't even know. I, what that somebody means. told me about that, like that Whopper commercial, because that comes on a lot during like Whopper. Yeah. Whopper uh, they're like, it just makes them depressed as shit. Yeah, and that was written by Hans Zimmer, by the way, which is crazy. <laughs> what? That that uh, Burger King jingle, oh. like Hans, they paid him, they gave him like a stake in the company to write the Burger King songs. Genius man, genius, smart, man. sexy, talented, Whoa. just like my uncle. We all know how that turned out. I don't know what I was going with that. How lot, are you guys? A doing? lot of picnics that he avoided. So come on, sit on Uncle Teddy's lap. <laughs> no, I don't want to, Uncle Teddy. Don't make me do it again. Quiet on the set. <laughs> mm. I just up. watched that. Oh, was it not as de the most depressing thing you've ever seen in your life? Yeah, it was pretty bad. But I looked Awful. at my I looked at my tax returns today, and it was pretty depressing too. So <laughs> I don't true, know. I don't know which is worse, but no, yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, I obviously the the show. I mean, it was it was a one of the doc, but it was really what made it have legs was the uh, Drake Bell stuff. Yeah, that third episode, I, I couldn't watch the fourth one. I never got to the fourth episode because the Drake Bell one was too sad for me. I think they move. I I can't. <sighs> They don't, they kind of go, uh, they start talking about other stuff other than the Drake Bell thing. I think, well, because they gave Drake Bell like 45 minutes solo on that yeah. third episode. Watching his dad was what got me, dude. I couldn't handle that. Yeah. That was rough. Too much for me, senor. Too much for me. But how the hell are you guys doing? Let's find out. Jacob. Jacob says, not going to be able to catch this one. Well, you know what? Just get out. Just go. Bye, You're Jacob. not going to stay here <clears throat> for the whole thing. Just get out. I thought you were my boyfriend, I mean, my, a subscriber. What are you talking about? We slept, walked together many times. Uh, but mi miss you guys. And Jay, I'm so sorry for your loss. Keep your head up, man. Love you, dude. And you've been in my thoughts. Can't wait to watch the replay tomorrow. Love you guys. Well, the replay's not good you, enough. But... Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, if you yeah, guys don't know, enough, uh, the, the uh, old Grim Reaper lifted up his dress and stuck his bony dick right in my asshole again. I mean, he's like, I must be his favorite asshole or something. He just keeps <laughs> drilling that shit. <laughs> Apollo so I, I have turned gay for the Grim Reaper, I suppose. It's like a prison <laughs> relationship. It's not by choice, but it's the only way to protect myself. You know, when he pointed his finger at you that way, that's not what you were supposed to do with it. I tried to tell you. Yeah, I feel like Gr the Grim Reaper is turning to Oprah around here. He's like, can you get a gravestone? And you get a gravestone? And you get a gravestone? Honestly, I don't want, I'm not there. Don't do it for me. <laughs> He's making a whole basketball team. I know. It's going to be a fucking Easter egg basket full of them. <laughs> <laughs> love you jacob just kidding buddy you're the best thank you man. Uh, i need to hear how you felt about that new sum 41 album too uh dean cream betweens hey it's uh it's uh yes, yeah. all dean cream betweens <laughs> is that thinking of you jay the wham fam is here for you thank you man appreciate you dude thanks buddy uh courtney reed r.i.p to the original terminator oj scary movie six on the way yeah getting into the movie news right away <laughs> have you heard yeah. about this uh, uh well not the not the scary movie thing i actually just found out about the oj thing like um a day ago when it happened because uh, I, I didn't like i wasn't like all over my phone I, like i woke up and i was like oh oj's dead back yeah. to the morning news uh, <laughs> it's about time <laughs> i was like oh damn I, i'm gonna not miss him but he was great in the naked gun but yeah that was, I, that's all i remember i wasn't i didn't watch this football stuff i know great he's a with great the gun football. too i hear yeah well i know he's a great football player but I, that's all i do about him yeah. right, other than the naked gun he was actually the character in the beginning of the last Boy Scout who shoots the guy in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, trying they, to score. Yeah, yeah, they just switched that out for a gun instead of a knife. You um, got, you got, you got to respect the gall of a guy who will commit a murder and then write a book called "I Didn't Do It, But If I Did, Here's How I Would Have Done It." Yeah. What the balls on that man? I bet that. Well, that's why. Shit. That's why he's a Heisman Trophy winner and we're not. <laughs> Yeah, exactly uh but scary movie six yeah they're doing scary movie six paramount an announced yesterday that they have the balls to come to this world in 2024 and say we're gonna make a super offensive like immature comedy filled scary movie and i'm fucking here for it like i hope it i hope it is exactly like you know, the other scary movies and it doesn't get fucking sidelined by some bullshit where they they're too yeah. pussyfooting around actually doing jokes 
Yeah, that's what I see. A lot of the responses I see, it's like, no way, man. There, there's no way that they can recapture that. But the thing is, is that I feel like the pendulum swings only so far, and it's swung so far that we barely even have comedy at all at this point. Yeah. So if they're ballsy enough to make a scary movie six and an R-rated Ninja Turtles, which I'm sure we'll talk about, the same company, it tells me that they're going in the other direction, and maybe the pendulum swings back, and scary movie comes out, and it is immature and everything we wanted it to be and it blows up and does big box office because you know when the money's there the studios will chase anything you know yeah, so i don't want to grow up mom give me the dick jokes and the fart jokes and the poop jokes i want it all idiot. it's not a phase mom i don't make a real movie i just want to see sketch after sketch after sketch then it's a loose narrative that there's maybe a story that's what the yeah. original scary movie one and two were which are the best yeah. ones i know that i got some love for the third and fourth but the first and second one are the best period yeah, they got they got too silly, I think, with it. You but know it what happened? Like, well, it's gonna be interesting, dude, is because you look at like you know they're gonna make fun of Halloween ends. Yes, that a hundred percent the legacy, the requel thing they'll probably do. They'll probably make fun of Scream, they'll probably make fun of Halloween, they'll definitely make fun of the new Exorcist. I think Blumhouse is gonna be a main target if they know what they're doing, yeah. which is I was weird because you've got a, a movie studio making fun of another movie studio, so maybe they won't go that far, but well, they did it with uh they made fun of all, all the other uh, the, different the characters in the movie. The uh, movies, but, but they never went after a studio. Oh, yeah. So out. maybe they won't do that. But yeah, Blumhouse Properties for sure. But in a way, it's like getting roasted. Like it's an honor to be, you know, mm -hmm. just because they're making fun of you doesn't mean that they're necessarily doing it with hate. Gary B, Mike J, you being live could not have come at a better time. Tomorrow I am burying somebody who was like a father to me. Love you guys. I'm sorry to hear that, uh, man. That sucks, dude. You know, well wishes to you and your family. But yeah, we'll be here for you, dude. We'll leave the lights on just like a motel. Yeah, and Free you know spec. what goes on in motels. <clears throat> Fingering and smelling it. <laughs> I, I was talking about the continental breakfast. Oh, what are you talking I, about? I Jesus. I was talking about pussy, but okay, we'll go on. Pervert. Pervert. We'll move on. Oh, Lee is back and smacking us in the face with wondrous gifts and toys and love. We had, we had some of those last night together. He says, hey, sexy fellas, Paramount Greenlit, an R-rated T I told you we would talk about it, and Lee's yeah. bringing us the news himself. Yeah. R-rated TMNT movie, The Last Ronin, and oh God, do we need a scary movie? I wonder what Doofy is thinking. Good to have my boys back. Miss you and love you, Jay. I'm keeping you in my thoughts. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, dude. And yeah, you're right. I think it'd be a perfect. I, I I hope they put Doofy back in it. I don't know why they wouldn't. That guy literally has. He looks exactly the same. We saw him at, at uh, Scare Scarefest last year and the year before, and he looks exactly the same. He even dresses oh, yeah. up and does photo ops with people, which is cool. And he gets yeah. drunk as fuck, and he's such a swell guy. He's actually a really nice guy. Uh, but, yeah, um, definitely had him back. And then uh, the TMNT movie, Mike was telling me about that two days ago. And I, because he just said they're making an R-rated TMNT movie. And the only one I could think of was The Last Ronin, which is a that's, great comic. It's an and amazing that's the one they're comic. doing. Yeah, and I, I was, but it's extremely depressing. I mean, there's, I don't think there's a happy-go-lucky moment in it. I mean, there might be a couple of, like, slapstick jokes or whatever. But it's just, the whole, if you think about the whole, the, the plot, it's, Michelangelo has lost all of his brothers and he uses all their weapons to go on a revenge quest and he like slices the motherfuckers up left and right with all their moves. And I think that I think they're ghosts follow them around or something. I don't know, like some weird Ouija board shit. But yeah, dude, it's uh it's like the Punisher for Turtles. Which sounds amazing, doesn't it? Like I, like, I think it's gonna be great. I'm sure that's gonna be super depressive, like you said, but all and like the fact that someone's going around and killing the turtles, seeing the Ninja Turtles, especially if they have the the nut sock and just the, the ingenuity to go back and, and hire the Jim Henson team and actually do puppets again and not yeah. do CG. If they do CG, it's fucked. I might as well do animation, in my opinion. But if they do the actual live action puppets, it's going to be so heartbreaking to see them die. Like we almost saw them die with what happened to um in the in the set in the first movie to um which one was it that was in the tub? Was it Leonardo? Raphael. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he was angry. Damn it. But um, to see the turtles actually be murdered Leo, is going to be hard to watch. Oh, it's a Kodak moment when they were hugging <laughs> in the tub, which is always weird. They were hugging in their tub and their turtle dicks were touching because they were both naked. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but, no, yeah, it's uh, it, it's going to be, I think if they do it right and they don't take any shortcuts and they don't try to push any agendas or anything like that and they just make a straight up heartbreaking revenge type of movie, it'll be awesome. And that's all we can hope for. I don't know what studio's handling it. That's really going to... But but again, I agree. Paramount. It's got to be it's got to be the live action, or it's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, it would work. Don't get me wrong. If you want to put it on HBO or something, you can make it violent, and of course it would work. But I'm just saying, I want to see the the, the, the actual turtles back, not that bullshit Michael Bay stuff anymore. 
Yeah, and I think I saw that it was going to be live action. Don't quote me on that, Jim, but I'm pretty sure that's what they said it was going to be. And that's what we need. Like, whatever you do with the Turtles, make it R-rated. Don't make it R-rated. I don't give a shit. But if you just, at the very least, do the do the animatronics, you know, do the puppets and shit. Like, that's where it's at. Although I did love Mayhem. Have you got a chance to see that I one yet? I haven't watched it yet. Man. Dude, you'll like it. You'll like it. It's pretty cool, man. It's old school, and I love it. Hey, we love you too, Lee. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Lee. Uh, and Green Doofy back, by the way, would be a great idea. Uh, Jack Plays 95 says, thinking of you and your family, Jay. Super nice to have you both on a live stream. Looking forward to it. Get Thanks, up! Jack. Thank you, man. You look good. Don't take a picture of yourself anymore. You look good. You look fe- you look fucking sexy, dude. <laughs> Don't take a picture of yourself anymore. No, you look good. Get, Don't worry get about closer it. to the camera so we can see you. All right. Like you look like you, like you look like you just wrote like an award-winning horror movie, and you're just gonna go out like get ass tonight. Like that's what you look like. <laughs> Headed to the club. You look like you smell like polo blue. <laughs> that's great i like I like, dude i seen a dude the other day in the bathroom um um was using um michael jordan cologne like the old michael jordan oh, cologne with that. the bathroom and with the, or not with the bathroom with the basketball imprinted in there dude i was so jealous i was like i didn't know that we could do that as adults i'm getting some of that like today that shit smelled good i thought it was underrated yeah dude i i use like i've always used curve and that's it yeah i know um i love I can it smell it i can smell it right now I love it. Most time I got the most, like, uh, my uh, wife got me uh, Fierce. Remember that shit from Abercrombie and Fitch? That's like uh, $80. That and Woods was both, they were both good. I mean, it was good. I was like, I can't afford this. No. So thank you. But this is the last time I was just going to put it on like on like a like a shelf or something and just look at it and never use it. Because it was <laughs> I buy that shit. Get it, find it at like Marshall's or something once it's past its due date and you can get it for like 40 bucks, you know, yeah, maybe. Like a travel size? I don't know. I could never afford either. Never actually owned a bottle. I just like to go around smelling men. It's fine. Mind your business. Grease fold. Hey, guys. Things getting better? Hernia surgery soon. Well, hopefully for you and not us, because then yeah. things would not are be you asking better. us if it's... I don't know. I'll have to consult with your doctor and see how things are going. <laughs> <laughs> Should I get a hernia surgery or not? Yeah. Well, you know, it's like as far as... Yeah, you know, things move at a slow pace when things like this happen. And, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, it's getting a little bit better day by day. But as far as, like, your hernia, hernia surgery goes, oh, that goes well. Try not to yeah. lift anything leading up to the surgery because I don't want you to pop a ball or anything. That like includes that. penises. You got to put those penises down. Well, he, right? well, he, well you know what he's thinking. He's like, well, how am I supposed to lift my own dick to piss? <laughs> 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 lift with your legs. There that's you what go. they say. That's what they say. I've never had that problem, but that's why I hear lift with your legs. Dan Belcher for J. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Full jet. Uh, yeah, it kind of uh, no. It's very sweet of you, Dan. That's really nice. Thank you, dude. It kind of reminds me of the end of uh, like uh, it was an afterlife. It's like for Egon or for Harold. <laughs> I, mean, that. Thank you. I just pictured his legs crossed that his dick tucked between his legs. It's like, Full jet. <laughs> I'd watch I it. Just I don't know why that's what popped. Put a video head. up. I would watch it if it was a private message. I would. Maybe I just wanted to think about you naked, Dan. I don't know. Anything could happen. Thank you, buddy. Child of the corn. Child of the corn. Yo, what's good, fellas? I lost my dad seven years ago this week, so I'm feeling for you, Jay. Just know life is nothing but a blessing song, and they'll always be watching down on you. Love you. Love you. Guys are back. Love that. Hey, man. Thank you. Very sweet of you, man. I I like it. And you know what? Like, I like what your sentiment was. Just like life is nothing but a blessing. But for some reason, when you were saying that. Box of chocolates? No, no, no. No, uh, life is a highway. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I don't know why that shit popped in my head. Life is nothing but a blessing, but you're right, man. You're absolutely right. I, you know, you don't take for granted your life or those around you. Say love you to somebody because you never know when they're going to be gone. But appreciate, it, man. Really nice sentiment. Uh, yeah, and I, <laughs> life is a dude's dick. I want to ride. Here's, you know, no, it's like, no, like because here's the roads you're traveling on. You don't want. <laughs> I was just thinking of that shit. I don't know why. Um. Hey woman, hey woman, <laughs> yeah, fill it up and bring and bring me a steak too. No, it's like, no, I, sorry. I, 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 sorry. Like, I was conjuring. Mr. Sorry, like, hey woman, hey, since you you don't want to, I got no real man. Maybe I have to match. Because of my, <laughs> show you what a real man is. You ain't no man, Balboa. You ain't hey, no man. fool. Doesn't get me a whiskey and coke when I ask for whiskey. Dude, I will say, uh, by the way, I think Rocky Three. I, I gotta be honest with you, man. I, I feel like it's severely underrated. It is. In ways, I agree. Because it's the it's the building block of Apollo and the friendship that he has with Rocky. It's got it's up to. I mean, it's got the first time he's ever been tested. You lose Mickey. I mean, no, of course it's not going to stack up with the other Rockies. I mean, it's better than Rocky Five. That's a horse shit piece of shit. I don't like Rocky Five at all. There's no yeah. redeeming factor in Rocky Five. Anymore. I think I think Sly overacted a bit in Mickey's death. You know, like I think it, it's the one of the first times it felt sort of false. Like he was Oscar chasing a little bit, and like I guess it was hard to see him. It was hard to see Rocky in the first half of Rocky Three as like kind of a 
uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a diva. Well, yeah, you know, he had all that nice good, though, is because he got caught up. He lost the Iron yeah. Tiger. No, the story makes total sense. It was just hard for me as a fan to see my Rocky be that kind of person. Oh, it was hard for, for me to see him on fucking food stamps in Rocky Five wearing a dirty ass leather jacket. Back <laughs> You're out. I know. What it be? What it be? That's what made the fucking beginning of Rocky Five suck even worse. Because like you just got out of this shit. That's and, like, what I'm now saying. Now you're poor again, and he, he lost, never he never got it back, dude. It just ruined everything. It ruined the legacy of Rocky until Rocky Balboa came out, which is hor- I man, and I'll give it to Rocky Five. Uh, Tommy Gunn was he was all right, but he was he was the weaker of all the villains I've ever. No, I, I'll take that back. Rocky Balboa's bad guy was pretty bad too. They both were Harvard. Bad. It's Harvard. They both. Yeah. Were, I didn't like either one of them. I would. Ca- Tommy Gunn might have been better than Tarver just because he was maybe a better actor. Uh, but <laughs> like they both were pretty bad. But dude, the Rocky Five, the best thing it had going for it was that song, Go For It. That's a badass song. That was the only thing I liked about that movie the most. Yeah, I watched that movie as little as possible, so I don't remember that part. But I like the JT Custom said, and I read that in Salone's voice. He was like, I didn't see nothing as overacting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just dude, nothing that's so overact. Dude, JT Custom is one of those guys that will call your ass out for. Oh yeah, I'll tell you. He'll dude, I truth. don't know what happened. I keep hearing shit up here, and I don't know if there's a fucking mouse or some shit. I swear to God, dude, I will scream like OJ's victims no, if one if I see it. <laughs> you're just supposed to use it to work your computer. It's fine. It's just, it won't bite you or anything. No, dude, know? I keep hearing shit. Like I swear to Christ, dude, I will. Fu- I hate fucking mice. Dude. Is is April under the desk again? <laughs> Get out of here, bitch. No. That's a deep cut. If you guys were there for that stream, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was funny as fuck. I don't even want to look around, dude, because I keep hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to scare it away? Yeah, I was. Dude, this one yeah. time, there was one in the house like a couple of years ago, and I, I chased it, and it jumped into a box, and then I was like doing crazy shit at it, and I fucking opened the box, and it died of a heart attack. I killed it without killing it. <laughs> I mean, I killed it, but it died. So it really the... was just dead. Or about it. You know what? It could have been passed out. I don't know, but I scared the fuck out of it. And it was just yeah. like, and I was like, oh, now I kind of feel bad. But I was like, you're a fucking dirty ass rodent. I have to apologize. I have to apologize. I have to apologize to the ASPCA because I was killing mice in like the mean ways before I realized you could do it humanely. And I went on Amazon and I, oh, dude, there's there it is. Shut I, the dude, fuck it up. just went by your candle, dude. I swear to God, it just no, went it by didn't. your candle. Yes, it's. No, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah, I saw your face. You <laughs> it's I got, hold on. I got to call my wife for her to take care of the problem, okay? <laughs> I'm streaming. It's not because I'm I'm scared of it. I'm just, I'm streaming. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, just. it's probably a fan that might be just hitting some papers or whatever. No, dude, right at this point, I would rather take Big Dad's ghost coming up here to yell at me for drinking on camera <laughs> than a fucking mouse in this room. Yeah, he's never seen a stream, and now he has. No, no I, I never he's, let he's him watch it. Like, I never let him it. or mom watch that shit. I was like, you're watching that shit. He's like, why not, honey? I was like, because it's filthy. <laughs> it's, it stinks to him. It stinks. It stinks. That's why I don't want you to watch him. <laughs> he, he always says, like, you on the TV? You on the TV? I'm like, yep. 4.5 the cat. If, if you go to if you go to YouTube TV, I might be on there. Go to a specific thing. DJ Graham, miss you guys. I might say fuck it and just skip work tonight because it's Friday. Hey, Jay, all right. I said all my loves and love and hugs to you and your family. Hey, thank you, uh, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, just we, skip work. Dude. If I were you, I I would literally talk you into doing it. I, this, April gets pissed at me for doing that. Like I'll be like, yeah. let's call in. And she's like, I can't because I don't have any time to cover. I was like, cover schmover. They fucking replace you in a heartbeat anyway. Fuck them. Enjoy your life. Don't work it away all the time. And then she's That's like, what... I literally don't, I can't because I'll get fired. I'm like, okay, you should go in. But you should do a half day because they won't count a full absence against you. That's the way was, it works over there. I was literally getting ready to out you on that shit too. I was like, that is JJ. I'd be like, dude, just call in. No, it's fine. No, you you, you haven't called in like this week at all. So just call in. I, let's I just, go to the, the I, I like, you know, everybody, like, you know, let's just have, let's just have no worries tomorrow. Let's like listen to John Bellingcamp and just have the top down as we cruise around the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I get caught up with that, but I did. I, I would actually talk myself into fucking, I almost, I don't know how to get fired. I would do that all the time. I bet like, they got people to cover it. It'll be all right. I haven't missed at least for a week. <laughs> that's i was dude i was literally telling katie about that yesterday like when i was like 17 or whatever and i would just and i knew it, it was like uh it was like in for love of the game when like he gets rid of the crowd noise he's like enhance the mechanism and everything mm-hmm. gets quiet one day i'd be i'd be at a job for like two weeks I'm like i like this job it's fine but one day i would sit down 
and it would just click in my brain and it'd be like you have to leave right now you could quit and no one could stop you and yeah. you can go home and play madden in your underwear and nobody said you don't have to look for a new job till tomorrow and mm-hmm. nobody has to know and that voice would just get him and i would never be able to defeat it i would just stand up walk out the door i quit so many jobs in my youth that way it was bad yeah, I, yeah I, well i do remember this one time i had a job uh it was big dad got it for me and it was at walmart and I thought he got me a job at the electronic center. And cause I was like, Oh, it'd be cool to work in the electronic center. Cause yeah. I like movies and shit. And like, we could just, you know, I, you know he's, we could talk about DVDs. It's on a disc, you know, I got, <laughs> and then video games and stuff. But then I, I went to work and uh, I was in a fucking warehouse spray painting shit because they were like remodeling it and they were taking all their employees and making them go aware. And I was like, <laughs> I was thought I was like I'd only been there for fucking four hours, and I was in this warehouse. It was my my crack was sweaty. It was hot as fuck. It was in the middle of summer, and I'm spray painting this shit without anything on my face. And I'm like I'm gonna get fucking cancer in here over fucking Walmart. Fuck this shit. <laughs> and then I talked. I I at, by, at lunchtime I went. I told the guy I was like, hey, just tell him I'm not coming back. The guy I'd made the one guy I'd made a friend with, and I'd only had like five words with him. He's like, you ain't gonna put you in two weeks, then, man. And I'm like, nah. I ain't been oh, no, no, I, weeks, no. I said no. I said uh, I said I already did. He's like, oh, all right. <laughs> I was like, just tell him I'm not coming back. He's like, all right, man. I, I, you know, good luck. And then I just, I got my car and left. And the big dad found out about that. He was like, don't you ever ask me to help you get a job anywhere else again? You embarrass me because dad used to sell plants that he had a nursery and he, he knew the regional manager of the WalMarts, Don Howell. I remember that Don Howell. He's like, I gotta call Don Howell and say my son quit on his first day. And they were gonna move you into the like electronic department as soon as it was built. <laughs> I, like, I gotta fucking be I there thought, for six I months. They had you pushing few... carts. I thought that's no, I, I, that was I that was a two week job I got when I was 16 or 15. Oh I quit so that you, job you too. quit you quit Walmart twice. But Big Dad didn't give me that job the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Because of what happened, we got you know, the, the reason why I quit. Don't you ever ask Walmart for a first off, job. I quit that bitch job because a car pushing job is a horrible job anyway. And when I was in that, when I was that, the, the fucking machine kept breaking. You know, like that machine. Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> but anyway, I know I don't know. I swear there's a goddamn mouse in here. But the, you know, like the machine that you see those car pushers put on, and like they they put all the carts on them and they push them across or whatever to load yeah. them back into the bay. Yeah. We had our like car pushers. It wasn't yeah, it wasn't hard to use, but ours kept fucking breaking. So my, is my fun. We'd have like a line of carts that would be go over where like the the uh, the crosswalk was, and it would break down. And then people would be honking. There was like, get the fuck out of the way, goddamn dude! <laughs> fuck, look at these fucking idiots. And it like, sounds the, like the, Chicago. The, yeah, well, no, dude, because the guy I was working with, he'd be like, oh, you got man, you we just have to take them off one at a time, buddy. And I was like, are you not concerned that there are people that are angry at us because we're withholding them from going into the store and purchasing their fucking bullshit? And he's like, man, don't worry about them. They go, they people are gonna get mad. What are you gonna do? And I was like, I can't fucking do this. And I and they, we and they never fixed it. We put in multiple. I, I said we gotta fix it. They said we gonna get on it. They never fucking did. And then they had me out there fucking working when it was raining and lightning. Right, and I'm fucking pushing carts that are metal. And I was like, I'm gonna become fucking Raiden out here. Anyway, so I quit. I got my first paycheck, and then I quit. I got. I was like, man, I'm rich. 142 dollars. I made it. I made it. Hey, and, and that's why that's these stories are all a mountain of of storylines about how we ended up here with you guys tonight. Yeah, dude, I was like, 142 dollars, man. I can retire. A, li- a life is a, uh, <laughs> a life is a, is, a, is a collection of stories, uh, but yeah. If you're learning from anything from us, DJ, it's go to work tonight. Don't don't you call? Actually, call in. You know what? Take a night off. You deserve it. Yeah, yeah. You deserve. It. Hang out with us, but don't seriously. Don't don't get in trouble. But do you know? Just whatever. Uh, Jesus Christ! I'm like talking to a woman. Don't you know pussy. I, mean? don't be a pussy. <laughs> I don't want you to. Or no, I don't want you to. Do I only this. call in if you got um, if you got time to cover it. If you don't, d- fuck it. I'm just kidding, ladies. I, it was a joke. It was a terrible joke, and I apologize to women and... What call him? Oh, fuck. What? I saw it, dude. What? A woman? in the pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a female I mouse. saw a woman in the pumpkin. It was, it was a female mouse. It's a little early for Halloween. I guess the strip club's rolling it out early. <laughs> AJ Files says, have you guys seen the movie Kung Pao? Listen, AJ, don't bring your racism in here. <laughs> Okay, I understand you voted for Trump, Kung Flu, and and whatnot, but get out of here with that shit. <laughs> Kung Flu. <laughs> no, I've never seen it, but I heard it's really funny, Kung Pao. Isn't I never there, saw that one either. Isn't there like a Kung Pao special that you can get at Panda Express? 
Yeah, I believe there is. And it's probably delicious. Yeah, that's what it does to your butthole. Kung Pao. <laughs> Tell <laughs> me. Does, no, dude, every I, time I every time I have Chinese food, dude, literally it's a like Kung Pao through my anus. Every yeah, fucking time. It's not good for you. Well, unless you get like, you know, chicken and broccoli. You no, they, is it the MSG food. that's bad or is it just a, or is it just because it's like deep fried and fucking like, <laughs> like the deepest part of the grease? You killed Quacky. No, it was shit. No, it was shit. Well, how come you kill Quacky for? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, he, goes, I think... he goes, I'm going to have to call my lawyer. It's like, not your lawyer. <laughs> He's like, I thought you were for He's like, yeah, for far, far south. You know, you don't even look Chinese. You don't like Mo from the Three Stooges. Get your ass back to work. He's, he's like, I fire your ass. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's from a movie underrated as fuck. John Leguizamo, the past, probably his funniest movie. I've like not just his funniest movie, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Period. Yeah, uh, the pest. That was we were not being extremely racist there. We no, that was in the movie. The pest. Yeah, we were the movie. <laughs> Somebody's like, "Oh, you're not racist because you were just saying what someone else said." Why don't, you, just, I... why don't you repeat a line from a rap song? What do they say, huh? <laughs> uh, Enunciate NWA, Mike. Tell the people what it means. <laughs> it, uh, it's a uh, 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 let. No, what was the the other one? Was let a naysayer know? Is I believe what they're trying to say with this? <laughs> yeah. Let a naysayer know. Um, uh, nachos <laughs> with anchovies is what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> um. Michael, I like that. I remember just randomly right here. Mike was like, Bob, the meatloaf. <laughs> I know, dude. Ow. It's true. Ow. Fuck that. Fuck. Dude, fuck I, 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 was, I was reading mom, mom's meatloaf, dude. It was dry as fuck. You're not even worried about me. I'm over here in pain. You're talking about dry. I thought, he, I thought he was gobbling fuck your nuts. That. I didn't know if you had peanut butter down oh. there or what. But I no, I need. No, you know, my mom used to make meatloaf and it was the most dry. It was dry as sandpaper and she would just squirt. Half a fucking bottle of ketchup on that <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Don't you say things. <laughs> she would just, you said yeah, it, bro. You she, said yeah, it. Her, yeah, her pussy was dry too. I don't know what the fuck you're trying to say. But anyway, uh, Jesus Christ. But yeah, she would squirt ketchup <laughs> on it and it would be a half a bottle. You know what? I don't even want to tell the story anymore. You're, <laughs> you're fucking gross. I'm sorry, but you said squirt, and I'm gonna laugh. Oh. Maybe I thought it too, but I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> Hold on, now I have to drink because I've just now thought about that. I'll be. Back. Oh, that's in all of our minds. We're all thinking it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but yeah, that meatloaf was dry. Oh, dry meatloaf. Uh, you got to put some ketchup on it, though. You know, no, just squirt a bunch of ketchup all over it. Yeah, she squirted it ketchup. Yeah, you got to squirt ketchup not on juice. it. Not juice. Not, not, not. God not damn, juice. it's fucking nasty, dude. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Michael Parton. Thanks, buddy. He says, Scary Movie 1 and 2 were my faves. 3 was funny and 4. <laughs> I can't. God damn it. Uh, 3 was funny and 4 and 5 were bad. And uh, Date, Epic Disaster Movie, and Meet the Spartans were like mad TV sketches. I yeah, remember those, yeah. With anything, um, with anything, <laughs> with anything, um, popular like that, there's going to be bad ripoffs of it for sure. But the thing is, is I don't think the Wayans, as far as we know, have anything to do with Scary Movie Six, which is the one thing that does scare me a lot. But then again, I didn't like the haunted house movies. They That's true. <clears throat> well, here's the thing: Scary Movie One and Two were so good because they had the the Wayans brothers working on it, and Keenan Ivory directed both of them, I think. Uh, and Sean and Marlon were great in it. Um. So I feel like if they do a scary movie six, they won't do it. I'm sure, but they need to go back to the Wayne's brothers and ask them to be a part of it in some way. I would love if Keenan Ivory came back to direct scary movie six automatically, it's going to be in the top two. Yeah. I mean, no, I, mean I, I mean, like it's going to be alongside top. one and two. Did he, I'm double checking. Um, yeah, he did. I'm going to double check your work here. Are you, are you confident in it? I don't need to check. I thought you didn't know for sure. Well, you know, I might be a little rattled since you were discussing squirting for my That's mom. That's not what I was talking about. You made it dirty. It was Keenan Ivory Wayne's. You are correct, good sir. That's yeah. an excellent job on your part. I'm gonna get you, sucker. I think that's what <laughs> I think he did that one too. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did a scary movie too as well, and he was yeah. awesome in The Glimmer Man as well. Underrated. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, what's in this shit? He's like, dear penis. <laughs> He's like, seriously. He goes to his apartment what? later and he finds deer penises. Wasn't like, it supposed to help that? him? Wasn't this for his dick? The what? The no, the, it was allergies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's I, like, I, I, thought, I thought his dick was impotent or something. Never mind. No, he's like, he was sneezing. He's like, sorry, it's these allergies. He's like, I got something. Clear that right up. 
God damn. Like, you know uh, what? I know that was in the movie and it was part of the script, but that literally sounds what Steven Seagal would say to somebody. <laughs> like, just in real life. He'd be like, oh, like if you met him, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. My allergies, my eyes are watering up. I'm not, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, I learned an ancient secret in China. Uh, when I received my 15th black belt, uh, you go out to the forest and you chop off a deer penis and you suck the juice out of it. And it's supposed to create manhood. <laughs> and he's like, what? Like, it's not yeah, funny. You, you have to go, you have to go, you have to go chop off a deer wiener while it's alive. And then <laughs> afterwards, tear out its throat and drink its blood along with its wiener juice. And By like, the way, oh. I, I, he goes, uh, I, my, my I master, uh, Shidoshi, uh, Shidoshi Chapachata taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> child of the corn thanks buddy says mike let me get you an urban legend final cut or cherry falls vhs and get rid of that soul survivor on mm. the back shelf eliza dushku hot but what a terrible movie i haven't finished it yet i went to i went to watch it for for a video and never made it all the way through it, it it's got some decent actors in it but man what i saw was fucking bad casey affleck's in this bitch all i know dude is like look how shiny this shit is This might be a dirty butt crack of a movie, but that's a pretty dope fucking VHS right there with that holographic shit. And they got Bosco on it. Yeah, and there's the right. Wes Bentley is in this. Casey Affleck in that bitch. Oh, uh, yeah. Boobies? Boobies. Boobies. I'm sorry. The cleavage was getting to me. Uh, yeah. yeah I mean, I, it sucked. I remember it, though. Elijah, uh, Eliza Dushka is hot as fuck. Though. What, was, what was she in that was a big movie? Uh, uh, True Lies. No, yeah, that was the doll. I thought she was in something else. Like she was in a horror movie before, after that. I know that she was in True Lies. Uh, uh, I do. Need yeah, to but get they were all bad. Cut. <laughs> yeah, they're all bad. I don't know. I can't remember. But yeah, um, as far as uh, what was it? Get rid of Final turn? Cut. I've never seen either one of Final Cut or Cherry Falls. Uh, they're both actually pretty fucking good. Cherry Falls is fun. It's not. I wouldn't call it. You can't call it good. You know, uh, Elijah yeah. Dushku was in uh, Bring It On. Wrong turn. Okay, uh, it was it was a uh, bring it on. I remember her the most because she was in a cheerleading outfit. That's, <laughs> that's the one. one. That's the that's one. What do you remember? Yeah, I was like uh, Kirsten Dunst. Get out of here, you jigsaw face looking girl. Her <laughs> like her face looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Her body's all right, but it's weird. Like her, they should like, cast her as jigsaw in a punishment. No, it's movie. weird. Like I mean, people are gonna like Kirsten Dunst is pretty, but like sometimes she's like, if you're like, what the fuck is going on with your face? It kind of reminds me of that, like you know that painting in uh in in it. The, when her face is all crooked in the and you're like what the fuck yeah it's just sometimes i could kind of see that for sure she was also she was also in jane song bob strike back uh, but i do remember this one i, I did really go for of, some hot sicilian oh yeah I do, yeah that's what that's what it was oh, it was man. her in that movie because the tight leather pants but anyway, like, yeah. what you see because what's your damage boy <laughs> yeah shot has this guy dude I remember, what's your damage little boy I remember I said something. Oh my god, dude, the lightning is insane. I'm uh, Kirsten Dunst. I, I think I said something about her uh, years ago, and so I, I was like apologizing because some people do love her as Mary Jane. I don't know who they are. Like she's got five fans for sure in that. Yeah, but she's they terrible. were like, I was saying something, and then they were like, "It's okay, Jay. It's true. I met her at a Starbucks, and she's a cunt." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> Didn't somebody like, okay. we know work at, or maybe I just read that online? Someone worked at a sandwich shop, and she was like super rude. As a sandwich I, shop, I, well, it's not. Yeah, well, they. I heard it through a, the, the comment section, and I think someone did say that or told us that. And then I, I, I always like you ever go on Reddit and you're just like, what celebrities are mean in real life, and they'll give you like these people give horror stories of like celebrities they met that have been douchebags, and she yeah. she popped up a few times. Yeah, but it not, was never like she wasn't like too, it was right. just more of a diva attitude, very much. Yeah, a huge diva. Kirsten Dunst is who we're talking about, by the way. Yeah, not and by the way, a Ma Mary Jane in the Spider Man movies is a piece of shit human being. Like the way she oh did God, those fellas, yeah. like she double, gosh, she she double deals on Peter and she starts fucking dating Harry in the yeah, first his best one. his best fucking friend. And he's like, Don't tell Harry. Yeah, I was like, Fuck you, bitch. get a better job. You, you fucking washed up actress hoe. I'm Spider Man. That's <laughs> why you never gonna, you're gonna be flop, you're flipping burgers forever for that fat, fat fucking Joe looking bitch. And correct me if I'm wrong, but di didn't once he, he like revealed himself to her and like showed he got, her all the stuff he was, then he and then she was like, "We can't be together." It was like, so what the, the baseline, fuck you want? Uh, yeah, because at the end of Spider-Man One, or no, at the end of Spider-Man Two, was it when he like whatever, and then she's like watching him swing away to save the day. She like got this like shitty look on her face, and then she, yeah. I think the whole, I think the whole part of the movie, I think it was the third one where she's like, "You don't have enough time." I, fuck that, dude. I'm saving old fucking men. And like yeah. fucking children on fire and orphanages, and you're yeah. fucking sitting there saying you don't spend time with me. It's like, oh god damn, go get a friend. 
Yeah, Holy go. Why shit. don't you go put in some work on your shitty acting career? How about that? And I'm not talking about Chris, Kirsten Dunst. I'm talking about the character she played. She was go terrible. Go fucking in that tweet play. about something. Go save the environment. I don't even that, fucking know. You Greta Thunberg looking bitch. <laughs> that's why fucking. That's why <laughs> Spider Man was late to all her shit because she's. I never thought Kirsten Dunst was a good choice for Spider Man. I never did. I always thought no. when I saw her, I'm like, yeah, that's not Mary Jane to me at all. I will say that that upside down kiss in the rain was pretty fucking hot. I get a boner every time I watch it. It was great. Yeah, mainly because of Toby, but still, it's none of your all's business. Mind your, mind your business. I was just looking at the veins in his neck. <laughs> I love you, Toby. Colton, what's up, buddy? He says, what's up, boys? Watched the new Roadhouse and liked it until about 45 minutes in. The fights were shot too close, and it looked too much CGI. Love you all and best witches. Jay, have you seen hey, fucking you, Roadhouse yet? I, I still haven't watched it. God damn you! No, because I don't like Conor McGregor, dude. Like, I, 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 if I had a, He's I don't the bad watch guy. His, he gets beat up. I know, but I don't want to watch him... I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll watch. He's something. fucking terrible in it, though, dude. He runs through. He shows up every time, and he's like half naked. He's like, "Oh yeah, we got the to begin." <laughs> yeah, like I you can't understand a fucking word he says, and he's always like swayed. He's like, "Oh yeah, we gonna get some smiths." You can't understand a, him. Does he have an accent in the movie? Yeah, he sounds like oh. he's fucking like yeah. I, I you can't. I just so he didn't, I don't know what he, he sounds he like. Try, no, I. Yeah, we could if he's an actual actor. He could work on his accent. Yeah, he walks. He walks in the roadhouse and he like starts breaking shit. And he's like, yeah, he's like Dalton, oh, Dalton. He's fucking terrible, dude. Do you know pu you pussies don't know how to drink? We're Scotland. <laughs> I'll break every fucking thing in here. That's I. I know he's not Scottish. He's Irish. Yeah. It, well, he, he about that, but. played a character true to his life. He beat up some old men in a bar. But honest to God, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is fucking awesome in it, dude. He's so good in the movie. It, it, if if you're watching it because you love Roadhouse, you're not going to like it because it's a it's a bad it's a bad Roadhouse movie. But it's a really good fucking movie on its own because as an action movie, it's fucking fun to shit to watch. And there's a twist in there that will fucking get you so pumped. All of a sudden, a switch happens. I won't say it for those of you who hadn't seen it, and you're like, fuck. Yes, I did not see this coming, and Jake Gyllenhaal was great in it, and I just like to look at him with his shirt off, so I got everything I wanted in that movie. But it was fun, dude. It was yeah, old I mean, school. I, it felt like an old school action movie. It's in my queue to watch. I just haven't got around to watching it. Why? Well, I, I watched that quite on the set, and that's that what that's what took up a lot of the time. So I just didn't really get around to doing it. But yeah, yeah, um, I, I I do. I'll, I'll, I'll check it, it like out. It's not because I want to look at Jake Gyllenhaal. With the shirt. I mean, of course, that's Whatever. why I want to see. It. I'll watch it again, dude. I watched it twice in like three days. That's how much I enjoyed it because it wasn't perfect. You liked right it that moment. much? I loved it, dude. I loved it. It's not Damn. perfect. I just, but it it brought me back to not to like early '90s action films and just the way it was done. And um, and I well, love. They, they don't have. They don't have a Sam Elliott kind of guy though. They don't. They don't have a Sam Elliott at all. But I almost like if you think about it though, it's almost best they don't even try because nobody was going to do that right. Like you know what I mean? Nobody was going to play that character right. And uh, and and Conor McGregor, as, as shitty as he is, I thought as an actor, and and even more shitty as he is as a human being, he was a good bad guy because he was formidable and he was jacked up. But there's even some funny ass jokes in there, like the movie. In the same way, Roadhouse was kind of funny at times, and like pain don't hurt, and there was some silly shit like that in it. Yeah, there's some silly shit in this movie, and I, I appreciated the comedy of it all too. You know, actually, I was just, I, I had to make sure that it, that's what I was thinking of. Who would have been a really good Sam Elliott type of guy in that would have been Jeff Bridges. Yeah, but he's probably not got. He's not got the. He's not. No, he's not, he's not. Nobody's gonna look like the fucking Marlboro man. Like that guy looked like yeah. he walked off a Marlboro commercial. Like Sam Elliott looks hot as fuck as an old dude. Like it just it, it worked for him. Like that guy looks like he smells like old leather, and he'll beat the fuck out of you and take your woman from you. Like that's just what it is. Yeah, I, I that's that's hundred percent true. And, and also, like I don't think anyone can pull off just the look that Sam Elliott had in Roadhouse. Like no one can look that hot. In the whole world, well, ever. Did, well, I mean, you don't have to have like a guy that looks exactly women like included. Him. Well, because <laughs> Gyllenhaal didn't have long hair, and like you know, like Swayze did. Right. No, that's true. No, yeah, but, it, but honestly, the movie didn't need him because it was just it was focused solely on on the Dalton character or whatever mm. that it just kind of worked out. And they they set it on a beach, so like just it felt kind of like a beach movie all of a sudden, and that that added to it. I loved it, dude. I fucking I think you'd love it too if you watched it. Uh, come, come over. I'll watch it with you right now. Okay. Yay, JC Customs. Thoughts on one, the announced Mel Gibson airplane movie with Marky Mark and Topher. What? No fucking way. That's not real, JT. You're lying. Holy shit, man. That's good crazy. One, man. Airplane Mel Gibson. And I don't want to see the TMZ rants that he did on an airplane at some point. When I Google airplane Mel Gibson, all that comes up is Air America. The goddamn <laughs> vodka and Red Bull. It'll get you every time. Oh, here it is. No, he's actually right. Uh, two days ago. Here, I'll share my screen with you. Um, Because I didn't even know about this shit. This is wild. Um, JT Custom out there doing April O'Neil's work. <laughs> Mr. O'Neil, 
<laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's how Mike uh, reach you, JT. He's the Foot Clan. <laughs> Mark Mark Wahlberg plays balding psychotic hitman in Mel Gibson's Flight Risk. First trailer drops at CinemaCon. Oh. Uh, Mark Wahlberg promises that he gets to show a very different side of himself in Flight Risk, a new thriller oh, okay. from Mel Gibson. That's cool. Uh, that's no exaggeration. Wahlberg who specializes in square jawed hoes or square jawed heroes. So Mark balding. Wahlberg, there's a there's a problem with the plane, and Mark Wahlberg and Mel Gibson they become friends and they pray. Yeah. They pray together, and the plane writes itself and carries on. Yeah, they, it threw. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm not. I, that's actually stupid. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I, I I'm not going to make fun of the religion stuff, but I I I thought when uh, JT mentioned airplane, I thought that he meant the comedy movie. I did too. Airplane. I did too. And I made like, me make fun of my bald spot. I've been working on this every day. I got yeah. hems. I got fluxetine. Whatever the fuck that. It would have been called. hilarious because I was like, man, that would be actually. It might have been a bad move if Mel Gibson started making fun of his alcoholism. <laughs> and like he was busted uh, from drinking and, and flying the airplane, like kind of like Denzel Washington in flight. But he was like saying all this stupid shit and they kind of poked fun at, you know, his arrest thing. I don't know, but that might be a bad time. <laughs> Dude, I cannot wait to fucking see the trailer for that shit. That's going to be fucking hilarious. By the way, in that picture, Mel Gibson looks like Mark Wahlberg farted and he's just smiling through it. Like his face is plastic as shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I can see that song. <laughs> you know, it's like farts around you. You just met him. Yeah. You don't want to like be rude. And be like, That's God just... damn. Mel Gibson's old man face too, though. Yeah. Uh, but and Topher Grace is in that too, which is wild. I gotta see that X Men ninety seven episode. No spoilers. Um. Uh, so I have one. I have one. I've, I've been watching with my eight year old. She fucking loves it. She gets pumped for the X Men ninety seven. Uh. I'm one. I'm one episode short. Uh, I just watched the video game episode or whatever. So I don't know about that personally yet. I gotta find out. Number three, Brad Pitt situation and R I P Big Dad. Thank you, man. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Brad Pitt's still hot. We just don't know why. Um, I, <clears throat> scientists have been working around the clock for you know can't. years and they just don't understand how that motherfucker is caught in time of sexy and he doesn't age he continues to be sexy doesn't matter what he does and uh, we're all just shocked and and astounded by this man's sexiness that has lasted for decades much <laughs> like uh, bon jovi's hair uh <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, I'm, well, I'm looking it up right now while you're talking. I'm not not listening to you. I'm just trying to figure it out. No, I know what I just, happened. I, no, I, I I'm well, used to dead air after I tell a joke. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have heard. You guys should have. I was the, reading. You guys should have heard the dead air at the funeral when I was trying to crack a couple of jokes to kind of lighten the mood. <laughs> wow, it wasn't just meta, it wasn't just literal that there was dead air it was metaphorical as well <laughs> oh no uh well, i'll tell you what was scary about this and i don't know if you guys know this or not uh i don't know why you wouldn't know this but what was messed up about that situation was that they scheduled the the funeral uh right oh, at the yeah. time of the eclipse so we started yeah. like thinking to ourselves we're like we're gonna be you know in a in a graveyard when the eclipse happens I swear, yeah dude, i was like if big dad fucking pops up and like walks out <laughs> that grave I'm fucking done, dude. I think the, the apocalypse is here. It's over. I thought, I was like, dude, I was, I was like, well, the, the eclipse didn't happen uh, right when, you know, the, the barrier yeah, was, was happening, but it, it was, was close. Delayed. It was like it, an it hour. Was late. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, you what? Uh, like, listen, I want this shit to be a very Christian, like, let's get him in the ground next to his wife and let's part ways and that don't make this some pagan shit. Like, I don't know what sinister motives. I felt like I was on an episode of uh, Tales, of, you know, scary stories to tell in the dark. It's like, if that fucking eclipse happens, <laughs> I don't know, man. What would you, what do you think? Like, if, if, if that it got dark or something, and all of a sudden I started going, Sim, Sim, Sala, Bim. Dude, I, <laughs> like... you know, those Roadrunner shit where you just see smoke? That's all you just yeah. I've fucking been gone, dude. <laughs> well, we were Paul Bears too. So we were talking about, like, man, if that thing starts shaking and the sun just goes dead, it gets fucking dark outside while we're carrying that thing. I don't, like, I don't know what to do. If I hear it's like some fucking dark ass pagan shit going, yama, 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 <laughs> like just out of nowhere, and then I can be in, in the casket with shit, I drop that shit and run. I'm sorry, big dad, but that's not you. <laughs> well, there was a bunch of would bees out there, though. So that was scary when we were walking through. I thought we were about to. Well, get... the would bees don't bother you unless you fuck with them. I mean, they were just trying to, we were like that's literally sitting say. on their benches. They were like bullies in high school. Like, they also say about, about what, what homeless people on? that's your bitch that's my bitch bitch <laughs> yeah but bothering them could be just your presence in their home They're no like, they, no, the they don't, no i swear to god would bees don't fuck with you i mean because if they sting you they die yeah but they like to get as close as possible so like we're carrying that shit and they were like doing that shit like ah, ah, i got you thank, thank you yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, would you fucking try I got, like i got i got teary-eyed uh in one set one one thing in this bee like got real close to my face like it was like trying to psych me out He's like, this motherfucker hurting, though. 
I'm going to back up. I'm going to tell my boys to back up. This motherfucker hurting, though. And then they left me alone, dude, because I got the teary eyes like, yeah, this, this motherfucker, I, 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 can, I can relate. True, dog. True. Yeah. But if you, I just want you to know, you come yeah, back in the yard again, it's on. Yeah, it was just weird, dude. Like, the timing. Don't, don't I, I didn't. Why didn't you go do the planning? Yeah, I didn't go do the play. I, I didn't do the, uh, my brothers went and, and did the, uh, the, you know, what time of the service. But I could have told them, like, Monday's weird, dude. Like, that's just weird. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to get it done, too, as quick as possible. But, I mean, on the fucking eclipse, holy shit, dude. Yeah. Well, we were at the Mexi afterwards, and that's when it got dark. So yeah, I, but said, then oh, it just, I was like, oh, look, fucking thunderclouds are coming in. Yeah, that's all. That's all we said. It was so cloudy here. And even we were in the path of totality, not all the totality, but like 90% of it or some shit like that. But mm. we're sitting in the Mexi and it just gets dark outside and a bunch of drunk dummies. We were all like, let's go outside and start the sun. So we all like left the Mexican restaurant, yeah. went out to the parking lot and everybody's like, oh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I felt like we were going to get superpowers or something like in Heroes, <laughs> but we didn't. I know, but dude, it was uh, I, uh, we were there and they we were up a rug and there's an old man sitting at the bar and we we weren't saying this stuff in front of kids it was some old you know bag that he had next to him and we something i i think i i apparently when i drew i get louder i know it's shocking right but i said goddamn panties or something i don't know what i fucking said like i juicy coochie and it could have been like, too bad because we had kids with us no, so it could have no, been awful we only had one child and he was 14 yeah yeah but he yeah, was like, oh, so I, I, I did, but I get like loud when I said juicy coochie or something like. You said, you said bitch or something or something, and this guy was like, like juicy coochie. <laughs> I'm saying, but it was bad. I thought I did because the guy looked at me. He's like, <laughs> like he was sitting what in the bar and we were sitting coochie. at table. He would like, I heard his. He went, <laughs> and he stared at me. And yeah. I looked. I was like, what? I was like, I, 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 was, I just look. I look back and I was like, all right. Maybe I should tone it down a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what he was talking about. He was he was basically committing murder because he was next to a 90-year-old woman and the entire three and a half hours we were there, she just sat there, just kept getting her fucking margarita glass refilled. She was drunk, refilled, yeah. and refilled. She should have had like a fucking oxygen tank in a wheelchair or something and she was just pounding goddamn margaritas she looked looking like, like the fucking eclipse itself. <laughs> yeah, she looked like, mister, mister, get this <laughs> off of me from Happy Gilmore. That's who she looked like. Oh, yeah, goddamn, you're fucking like but frail she's frail as fuck I was like, is like, that your mother it's weird but yeah i don't know it did it feel was, weird it, it was to a be day. in a mexican it restaurant a, a bunch of suits mm -hmm. you know I, yeah. i'm gonna you know what i i'm gonna go smoke the cigarette really quick. all right okay i mean i'm not like it's a candy cigarette that you get from the store yeah we don't it's, nicotine can get addictive nicotine and alcohol are stupid don't be dumb stay in school dare it's go to your local dare congressman I thought, you, I, I thought you meant dairy for some reason. <laughs> don't, <you're> some, <laughs> don't smoke a cigarette. Have a nice glass of milk. Milk, sir? Arnold Palmer? <laughs> oh, shit tits from Texas Town. Hey, Tyler. Revisiting JCVD movies. Look, dude, don't come in here with your fucking gym pick. Trying to make us look bad, all right? Got off the diet for a couple days. Had some Indian food today at a buffet, so I had two plates. And I got the extra hot shit, so yeah, I... I had a hot shit right before the stream started, and I'm having a lot of gout, not gout, GERD, as we speak right now. So don't show up here and your fucking gym picture looking all swollen shit and making me feel bad about myself. Do you know what you don't want to go do, you guys? Don't go to fucking Dick Sporting Goods right after you eat at a goddamn Indian buffet because there's just pictures of the rock sweaty and shit and like all these fucking people working out. I'm busting out of my fucking pants. I feel like I might just throw up Tandoria all over the goddamn floor. Don't go to Dick's after you eat Dick or after you go to a buffet. Anyways, I'm just kidding, Tyler. You look great, pal. Keep up the good work. Revisiting JCVD movies. Found some hidden gems. Hard Target needs more love. Why do you think he didn't stay as relevant like Sly and Arnold? Uh, Kalkahina. That's the actual answer to that question. And the answer to that question, Sean Claude would probably tell you himself, is cocaine. Uh, he got wild on cocaine and they wanted him to do time top time cop two, and him and sly and all of them were so obsessed with the competing with each other and he was just on bender after bender and demanded such crazy things when they were filming street fighter he became so hard to work with 
uh, that him and Kylie Minogue, I guess, would just like be in a hotel room and they like he would hold up the entire shoot and spend like so much of their money and time because he'd be up in his hotel room doing coke or like getting off of doing coke. And he would like slide a note under the door. Allegedly, this came from a book I read. He would slide a note under the door as an excuse to why he couldn't show up. And it'd be like, I have to pump my muscles. <laughs> he actually motherfucker did not show up on set. Because he had to pump his muscles. So the answer to JCVD was definitely Coca-Cola because he had, I think he had, much like Schwarzenegger did, JCVD was underratedly hilarious. And he could also do dramatic emotional roles. roles. I think his dialogue held him back a little bit. Arnold kind of got old. And I don't know if Arnold got better at the dialect or if just JCVD just, it wasn't quite as charming. So it didn't work in the comedic way. But I think that always kept him from getting more dramatic roles, but he showed in some of those smaller movies he did that he could do dramatic roles. JCVD itself was a decent movie. He did a movie called The Bouncer, which was fucking nobody saw it at all, uh, but he was so badass and and it's such a dramatic good role that he did in that movie. But I'm with you, man. Um, I'm with you. And I think Nick Cage, I think we all need to take a minute to to appreciate nick cage because he could have so easily gone the way of seagal and some of the other people and just started making ass movies and putting no work into them or whatsoever instead he created like his own subgenre of like surprisingly good movies made on a low budget um and just puts out banger after banger like mandy and shit like that so i think he subverted it but maybe that wasn't such an option back then and they were so used to being big their egos were too big they couldn't take a smaller project and i think it all just blew up in their faces and the world moved on without them that was a way too in-depth answer but i loved i love jean-claude van damme too much it's hurting deep inside of my but right now auto club pull pc auto cycle pc that's the worst name I've ever heard in my life. And I appreciate it. And I love you so much, but auto cycle PC, what does it mean? Maybe there's a meaning to it. I'm missing, but just first impressions are what the fuck. That'd be like me being like, restart your computer as like my name. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, dude, uh, I almost did that as a joke. I almost just shut my computer off. Just like for fun. No, no cause you said restart your computer. I was just going to, oh. I was like, okay. <laughs> this shit wouldn't come back on. We'd no, it would take, like, what like, it, it would be next stream before it came back on. I was giving him shit because his name's Auto Cycle PC. I'm sure there's a cool meaning behind it, but I was What does that mean? For, uh, Auto Cycle your PC? You got to oh, run it through uh, the car. Uh, oh, I thought it was just like, I don't know. It's, not, it's not like an X band name. <laughs> my next my next name is going to be 15 minute sleeper screen uh what's up mike and jay i wanted to ask if you could listen to one classic rock band for the rest of your life which one would it be for me it's van halen does it have to be classic rock i'm assuming and to me i guess you could say blink 182 is classic rock because they're on the oldie stations now i'm gonna go with blink 182 but if i had to go with one classic rock band it would be ooh. <laughs> Led Zeppelin? Yeah, that's what I'd go with. Mm. Um, What's yours? <clears throat> Tears for Fears. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, uh, probably just because it's easy to bang your head to, and it's like, like it's got, it's catchy even though it's repetitive. ACDC. Ooh, that's a good one. But that voice would get on your nerve. <laughs> just not, no, it just sounds like my wife telling me to do something I forgot to do. <laughs> so I'm used to it now. Talking about jailbreak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh uh, anyways all right i'll be right back we are at um 8 15 pm at the pom pom okay with uh john canapener <laughs> 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 you guys gotta say it's john canapener <laughs> yeah, like that motherfucker is so proud <laughs> great man <laughs> Bye, okay. Bye. we should read every super chat tonight in the voice of acdc like You've been cut to gays. <laughs> Beans and nice and Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'll be right back. Um, All right. Uh, John can open Thank you, man. He says, good to see you gays. It's nice to be sucking dicks. I mean, seeing you as well. Thank you, dude. Beans and rice and Jesus Christ. We like that. Okay. Beans and rice are great. Jesus Christ is a good guy. Uh, Michael Parton. Thank you, dude. Says, James McAvoy film from Blumhouse ain't promising. I don't know anything you're saying. I'm like, well, what do you mean? James McAvoy's film from Blumhouse. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I want to know what you... I, I want to <clears throat> have a connection there. I don't know. I've been... 
out of the news loop for, for a little bit, but uh, we'll talk about it for sure. Uh, Kyle, thank you, dude. Says, hey, Mike and Jay, I beat RoboCop. Dope game. Fuck yeah, dude. Watch Fallout TV show. Love it. Fuck, that's another one I got to watch. What movie are you guys looking forward to the most this year? Maxine trailer. Oh, my God. Uh, I haven't watched the Maxine trailer. I know what's happening. It looked promising from the little uh, clips I, I did see. I didn't, so I didn't watch the full trailer. Um, RoboCop is a dope game. It's one of the dopest games to come out in a long ass time, and it's a double A studio. Support those guys. I want to see more from them. That's an, it was an amazing game. They fan game, hundred percent love it. Um, <clears throat> and also, I'm playing King Arthur: A Knight's Tale, an, another uh, I think Nia Core Games. It, it's, it's another double A studio. Great game. Anyway, uh, movie you guys looking forward to the most most this year? Um, did you hear that shit? Fuck, dude. Okay, that's my blinds. I swear to God, there's not some poltergeist shit. I have a the windows open, so the blinds are rally. That kind of scared me, though. Anyway, um, I'm just going through some notes. <clears throat> Hold on, give me one second. I put it in. Um, uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, okay. So the top most anticipated movie I had for, um, we did a video a, a while back. Deadpool three. So I'll, I'll put Deadpool. Yeah, it's Deadpool. I know I felt like such a nerd, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say Deadpool 3. Just because I want to see how far Disney is willing to push it, push it real good, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, And uh, I'll ask Mike, that's uh, 817. Uh, DeGarza3 says, welcome back, guys. Okay. <laughs> Loving that Dixon 76. Uh, speaking of Rocky, y'all should check out Kevin James' Rocky Balboa. Hilarious. Oh, I didn't know he did one. That's cool. I, listen, like Kevin James is one of those guys, like he can be really funny. And like, and, and sometimes I think he is super funny. And then other times I just feel like his shit kind of gets dry, you know, much like my comedy as well. It's just very like, you know, washed up and it's like the same shit over and over again. But I'll definitely tell my, maybe we should, what we can't do a reaction though. Cause you know, YouTube is looking for a reason to boot our dicks out of here. So I don't want to get like a copyright strike, but uh, Lee, the machine uh, says, Hey, Lumish, you should interview Special Officer Doofy and his vacuum. Are you insane, Lee? Let me do an interview Doofy, who stuck his penis into a vacuum cleaner and then sticks his finger in his own ass out and smells it. It'd be like talking to Michael and smelling his breath. Disgusting, toxic. Probably going to he lose his eye. You lose IQ points. When I look at Michael, especially when I talk to him. No, I don't want to talk to Doofy ever. Doofy Poopy. You should be his name. Uh, Chris Sampson. Thank you, Doofy. Says, hey there, fam, Jay. Uh, you've been through so much. I wish your family peace. I'm going to be serious. Do you think Blumhouse can take the O.J. Simpson story from birth till death and redeem the studio? Blumhouse may creep plus two. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. The last three years have just... You know, nuts, dude. Um, uh, but uh, do you think Plumhouse can take the OJ Simpson story from birth till death and redeem the studio? Uh, like, if you're being like for real, like, could they do a movie based around the OJ Simpson thing uh, and make it uh, like a suspense thriller? Maybe. I don't, I mean, I'd watch it. I don't know if they'd ever do it. I mean, it, it's so weird, dude. Like, the, the OJ thing is so controversial. Like, I don't think any studio really wants to fuck with it right now, especially right now. But, um, I could see a studio like that taking it and, and doing something with it. Um, and you're right, Bloodhouse, uh, Bloodhouse may creep too. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe, I maybe would it redeem the studio though? I don't know. It, like it depends on on the story they want to tell and how they want to tell it. That's really going to be the important part. So um, Holly Roxy says, "So happy y'all are back. Very sorry, Jay, to hear of your loss, but uh, know that we love you and we'll always support you, buddy. Wham family for life. Thank you, man." Thank you, Holly. I'm sorry. I don't. It's always weird when guys call girls. Like, Thank you, man. Thank you, Holly. I really appreciate that. Um, like I said, it's it's uh, it's a process. It's one of those things uh, you never get over it, but you learn to live with it. And I, I mean, that's like you know everybody can relate to that, and everybody understands. Everybody has loss, right? Everybody has like some really bad shit that happens to them, and uh, you know, you know, I'll be honest, you don't get over it. I mean, you just learn to cope with it, and that's what we do, Holly. Jonah Imparato says, I uh, just want to say you guys are awesome. Always looking forward to watching you. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Jonah. 
I'm very sorry that you always have to look for just some mediocre shit. Hopefully you can find some better stations or better YouTube channels further in the future. <laughs> but we really do appreciate that, man. Thank you. Uh, Dean Cream Betweens coming in hot with his creams. Says, uh, some great movies hitting the 30th anniversary this year. Shawshank, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber, Ace Ventura, just to name a few. 94 was the year of Jim Carrey. It was. And how fucking dare you, Dean Cream, coming in here making us feel old shitholes. We're old as fuck now. God damn, we're old. But yeah, you're right. Uh, 94, that's, you're absolutely right, dude. 94 to 96 was the, was the Carrey years. Like, that's really what, like, skyrocketed him to, like, gold standard in Hollywood. But yeah, you're right. I mean, look at, I mean, you're right. The mask, Dumb and Dumber, Ace Ventura. Yeah, dude, I, I, I really, I still think that Jim Carrey is the funniest person that ever lives. Maybe Jim Carrey, maybe Robin Williams you could put in there. I don't know if there's any really other competition for that. Uh, well, I mean, like, like, funniest actor. Yeah. Like, I would but, say the funniest person for me was always Richard Pryor. Yeah, he was fucking hilarious. But yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, and Carrey did some good stand-up too, but. Yeah, but he was always slapstick. Like literally, Jim Carrey is a is a come to life cartoon, hundred percent. Yeah, no, nah, he's the fucking best dude. Even when he's like on shows and shows. I, I need to watch. By the way, Conan was on uh, Hot Ones. I, I can't wait fucking, to watch no, that. It's fucking amazing, dude. Like he, I knew it would be. I don't want to spoil it, but dude, that like he's the best guest they've had. Like in, I would say he's the best guest. Period. I've never seen anybody maintain their composure with what he did. Fucking insane, dude. Like with like with the other guy not laughing. No, that guy was no that that guy was like on cloud nine laughing like but what conan did was i've never seen anyone else fucking do it like it was insane i can't and the fact that and like and he just relied on his old school ways of like communication and like being the the late night host legend that he i, I think he's the greatest late night host period i really do um i i like it was insane to see him be able to maintain that composure throughout after what he did it was insane yeah, I gotta. I'm probably gonna watch it when we get done here tonight. I can't wait. Dave Grohl was a great guest too. He actually made yeah. Sean. He got got Sean drunk and made him cry, which is hilarious. <laughs> he was like, "I just love you, man," because he kept doing those those uh, Pantera shots or whatever. Uh, the mask met. He's got that. Uh, the dude from Jaws says his picture. Yeah. Uh, boys, my condolences. You're a couple good eggs, but I digress. Yo, next time, Andy M Matichek. I like the way you spell it too. You gotta remind us. Matichek is on the show. Put in a good word for me, huh? The mask met a handsome fellow with a body that don't quit. And yeah, legs your profile, all yeah, the way yeah, your profile picks picks the volumes. I'll, I'll make sure that she <laughs> that's, that's him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, dude. I, 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 yeah, but, I, but she's married. <laughs> like that's the only bad thing. It's it's kind of the, the highway has been shut down for any type of uh <laughs> travel. So negative uh, ghost rider, the pattern is full. Yeah, it's yeah. Sorry, uh, you're not gonna be buzzing the tower today. <laughs> she's the best though man we gotta she's have great. her on yeah, again some, at some point uh camelot films so sorry jay my condolences lost my dad on march 22nd yeah, oh, damn, man. i'm sorry yeah man that sucks dude i'm sorry about that yeah it sucks dude it's one of those things like i said i was telling earlier um uh, it's one of those things like you don't get over it but you you you, know, you learn to live with it and that's what you do time heals all i know that's corny but that's true by the way it's funny that you're camelot films i i was telling them earlier i've been playing um the new game i'm playing is king arthur uh the night still <laughs> and, but it's fuck no yeah but dude it's fucking badass because you don't play as king arthur it's like a it's like a um it's set in a, like a dystopian type of reality where king arthur has been slain by mordred which is his mortal enemy and you play the role of mordred because king arthur has come back from the grave like fucked up and he's like evil now demonic and he's like trying to like ruin avalon it's fucking it's great that's kind of gnarly actually that sounds I, i'd love to see a movie like that yeah is it like a role-playing game or is it like yeah a... well i mean it's like role-playing the fact that you play as mordred it's one of those top-down uh rts's so it's not for everybody but it's fun it sounds that's kind of badass i'm not i'm not gonna lie to you geek claire podcast says love you jay stay strong joe bob here joe bob joe bob uh brisket what's what's his name joe bob briggs is that his name joe bob briggs yeah yeah, I don't know why I'm blanking on that for some reason. But uh, even though I'm doing my own show now, I'll still mod Wham's Discord with Tomo Legato. And I just... Okay, Joe Bob. Oh. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. We appreciate it. No, that's awesome, dude. But And you have an amazing name. Uh, you share it with some of the greats. You do. Brandon Ferguson! What's up, guys? At the White Sox game, so can't watch for long. Just pop it in the show. God love. damn, Brandon! You know, can you please keep the racist stuff to a minimum? <laughs> there ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. I learned okay. that in eight miles. We're having a, a great conversation here with all our, our amazing folks. And then Brandon comes in here and says, hey, I'm at the Red Dragon meeting at the White Sox. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding, Brandon. That's cool, man. I, you know what? It's so weird. I, it's so rare anymore to hear a, like to see a White Sox fan. I don't see them like they used to be everywhere. When I was a kid, I swear to God, in the '90s, they sold White Sox shit everywhere, like uh, merchandise. It seemed like it was everywhere. Well, they're really bad though. Like they're a really bad team. Did, uh, like, who did uh, Bo Jackson play for the White Sox? I think for no Frank Thomas did. Bo Jackson may have stopped then. I think he was on the Royals, but maybe he was there for a minute. But I know Frank Thomas was a White Sox, right? I'm pretty sure he was the best White Sox player. Yeah. Uh, but now he just does all those testosterone commercials. Dude, I've seen one thing. They were sitting in like their legit professional like uh, uh, studio environment. And Big Poppy from mm. uh, the Red Sox, when when uh, Frank Thomas wasn't looking, he took his water bottle and he took a big old jug of Tito's and filled his water bottle oh with Tito's. God. And Frank Thomas live on the air took a drink of it. <laughs> he was like, he, dude, he didn't respond at all. He just went. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> and They were dying laughing. He's like, I knew you did something stupid. Why are you always trying to play, man? I wish Just I could like, get into baseball, man. I really, I mean, but, you know, watching it's got to be fun. Like, what? No, I mean, watching it live is fun. I just never could get it. I, there's too many games, and I never really could get into it. I, didn't, I can't find a team that I'd like, and I so. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't understand the rules all the time, and I don't want to watch it on TV because it's fucking boring to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm i a huge Braves fan, so, like, I pay for the MLB Network, and I watch, like, almost every Braves game. But other than that, I couldn't give a fuck less. It's just a thing. Just that team is all I give a fuck about. I, I remember, I, so I was like, oh, you got to pick. I think I picked the Marlins back when they really fucking sucked. Like, when they were, like, like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the 90s. Like, they were Yeah, really they bad. still suck. Shit, I don't think they I ever thought they got, got good. Did. I thought, didn't they no. win the World Series? Oh, they did win a World Series. When we were in, like, middle school, I think they won a World Series. They beat the Indians in that series, I remember. Mm -hmm. I do believe. My fucking throat is so full of shit. If they had I'm just got <coughs> something to help them out. See? Dude, those movies are so good. The Major League movies. I love Best. them so much. Best. Dude, Ellie's got... Um, by the way, my eight-year-old's got flag football tomorrow. Her first practice. Oh, dude, I'm so fucking pumped. Oh, that shit's shit. going to be hilarious. Dude, she can play, man. Like, she can throw that fucking pick skin. We are outside in the yard today, and I, and I was like, throw it! And she was like, I don't want your life. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, oh, shit, dude. I, I just forgot. Someone asked uh, Michael Parton, and I didn't even know about this. He said, I don't feel good about the... Um, james mcavoy movie in blumhouse i don't and i was like i had no idea about what's going on with that at all see i'm actually like completely dumb about that it's when evil not when evil that's a different completely different movie uh i can't forget the name of the movie but i didn't see the original but it mm. is dumb blumhouse is making a movie that's mostly in english it's some of it's subtitled but they're remaking a movie that's like two years old uh and and what's apparently the trailer gives away like one of the biggest but what, surprises. i mean what is it is it a horror movie uh I'll, yeah it's a horror movie it's like one of those it's kind of like funny games is the way i take it it's like really mean like one of those movies oh remake uh it is speak no evil is the name of the movie oh okay but i don't know anything about it i gotta watch the first one before i even watch the trailer because apparently there's a huge spoiler typical of fucking blumhouse project dead eyes says he's got your icon is like a, a metal t-shirt uh hey dad's been tongue wrestling y'all to death on 2k a dude okay dude what i gotta find this i will find this i gotta show it to you this is fucking awesome it's deep in my profile so it'll, it'll take a couple minutes but this guy made us on 2k the oh wrestling game oh god where is it it's so deep in there i'll, I'll keep scrolling and I'll, I'll let you guys know in a second but i want to play that dude I, I i'm gonna download oh here it is i got it right here uh and it was it, it's him it's he's the guy oh no yeah no i've got like i bought like last year's or two years ago i bought a 2k like i can't i couldn't figure out the controls i fucking suck this is us right here, dude. There's me. I guess he's got the Stu Lives shirt on. He Holy created shit, it. that's badass. Holy fuck, it's, dude. It's extremely accurate, especially the abs, because I have those. Uh, I haven't showed them to anyone. You guys can't see them, but they're there. It's a real thing. You can and, wash uh, clothes on them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there's you right there. Dude, it looks great. Yep. Belt buckle. You got the belt buckle on? I, I look like a fucking extra in, like, uh, Departed. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you got the fucking. I, like, I, I especially like. I especially like that you got the cross-eyed version. Really, really good. <laughs> it's kind of stuck in there. You did a great fucking yeah, job, dude, man. Yeah, it looks great. Like yeah. that. That's shit. I, he was like. He was like. I. I. They. They make you like have muscles. Like you can't not do it. I was like, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? We don't have like, muscles like that. First off, yeah, don't. I feel like that's like that's this is reality. I don't know what you're like worried about. Yeah, you got the body dead, dead I straight think, and correct. Everything's perfect. It's so good, my dude. arms 100 percent shoulders okay yeah <laughs> yeah apparently this is downloadable so if you guys want to play as us in the game i don't know <laughs> why you'd want to suck, 
but project can put it in the chat for sure that that shit's dope he says those custom wrestlers have been giving me the best three minute matches of my life hashtag today for sure uh yeah dude, I, I would love to watch a wrestler like if if someone dresses loomis in a fucking because the only wrestler i remember wrestling in a tie was irs do you remember that guy irs from yeah. the 90s <laughs> yeah. and but this motherfucker would have like a trench coat on there <laughs> that should be wild to watch a fucking guy wrestle in a trench coat with a tie on uh did you watch any wrestlemania no 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 nah, 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 nah. dude it is wild like roman reigns finally fucking lost so thank god for that that guy's boring as shit i want roman reigns just to retire cody rhodes won it so he's the new champion um uh what's the what's his dad's name um, dusty Rhodes. yeah dusty Rhodes' son won it but uh dude is crazy at the end the whole fucking place goes dark john cena ran out to help him and then the whole place and the rock came out oh, and the yeah. rock's the bad guy now right so he's the final boss or whatever and then he's the never gonna be the dark. bad guy though he, he can't like he's got too much charisma yeah people still love him and he's like beating people with a belt and, and cursing and they shit. love it it's, kind of felt like the attitude error for a second but the whole arena goes dark right and then when the when it comes when the lights come on undertaker is standing behind roman Man, reigns i they brought I, his ass back i'm not saying like listen obviously the undertaker is is one of the greats of all time i understand but dude it doesn't it make you feel so cheap when they retire and they just come back after two or three years like it does it takes away the meaning of them retiring and i felt like this yeah. when rick flair did it like four fucking times like rick flair yeah. is one of the greatest wrestlers promoters to ever live period and when he retired from the WWE and they had that whole good, great send off and his family was in the ring and he did the woo thing and he did the strut one more time. And I was like, man, that's, that's you know, leave the memories alone played. I was like, that's fucking awesome, dude. That's a great. And then he came back like a year later. He's like, I need money. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just feel like it takes something away. And I mean, they all do it. They all fucking do it. But I mean, yeah, I wish that when they you fucking retired, you were gone. Like, that's it. You got it. And I've always thought that too. Like they got to stop relying on the crowd pop of old wrestlers coming back and they got to really focus on building up their new stars. But mm. still at that point, it was kind of like it needed that. But I was disappointed. Dude. I found out today because I was thinking the whole time the rocks in the ring and, and John Cena runs out and uh, uh, dude. Uh, oh shit. I lost it. I lost who said that. I'm sorry. But uh, oh, nighttime said John Cena's bald spot was the star dude. Cause he just ran out there and like, mm. I guess he got his hat knocked off and John, John Cena's bald spot was full on display and it was like oh shit I mean he's a human being he's like the rest of us of course he has yeah. a bald spot if you don't park the hair a certain way but that um but I found out today dude that the character of the Undertaker show up was supposed to be Stone Cold Stone Cold was supposed to show up and fight yeah. the rock in the ring but Stone Cold versus the rock at Wrestlemania it would have been would have been it, fucking huge well again like, but it goes back to the argument like they're relying on on stars of the past to save a company that in a lot of ways may be sinking because they can't come up with any creative ideas to create new and, and awesome storylines or, or characters. True. No, I mean, because yeah. they had a great character. What was that, that that horror character they had? And they fucking ruined that. They fired him. Um, they fired him. The yeah, 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 that. And they, they, like, they've had opportunities to do something, mean, you know, but it's not all their fault. I mean, the shit going on with the man and everything else is probably like, yeah. that, that, the company, <laughs> the company image is fucking trashed right now. But yeah. it does make me miss, like, Man, I really wish WCW had never like, dude. If we had another like competing wrestling organization against, like, I don't know. They tried it with the AEW, but that just muddied the waters. And now apparently everybody they, hates but they're AEW. Still, I, think, I, I thought they were doing pretty good. AEW. They they were, but it's gotten real bad apparently. From what I've been just, I don't know. I just what I've been seeing on Twitter. I'm not, and also but, they also drug like dragged Sting's old ass up there with his fucking cane that he's using as a baseball bat. I mean, yeah, I felt bad had, for that guy too. I mean, it's, yeah, it's like these guys can't put it on their back, you know, fucking carry it anymore. Like it's like you got to, even though technically the Rock is still in the in the best steroid shape of his life for sure. <laughs> yeah. and, and but you know, like other guys, like the Undertaker showing his age for sure. Stone Cold is showing his age yeah. for sure. No, guys, we know the Fiend passed away and died unfortunately, but he got fired first. No, I know. Like, I, WWE I, I, know. I, I know. It wasn't. So. I know he passed away. I, I meant like, but yeah, exactly. He got. He had something really cool going as that character, and then they just canceled it midway. Yeah, and that that sucks to to see that happen. But yeah, I mean, 
apparently WWE is doing better than it ever has, and they broke a bunch of records with this new one. But I got to be honest with you, watching it from an outsider's perspective, none of it was that great to me, except for like I think CM Punk is like the best actor of oh, all yeah. of the new guys. He I think good. Roman Reigns is terrible. I think maybe going with the Cody Rhodes storyline could help getting away from that. They've tried so many gimmicks with Roman Reigns from head of the table to acknowledge they, well, me to the bloodline. It's like none of this shit works because he's just not like interesting. And I'm not taking anything away from Roman Reigns because I know that he worked to get where he is. And obviously, you can't be in the shape that he is without. Like, and he overcame a lot. So I, right. I, I mean, I know he had leukemia but... and, like, of course, like his personal struggles in life, of course, like, you know, it's very inspiring. But I'm saying, and I'm not saying this as an asshole, but I feel like Roman Reigns, it just, there's something about him that it never connected with me to, he, and again, this is going to sound bad and I know it's not true, but it's it, like, it felt like he was an industry plan. Like he was like like a like a made up you know like a manufactured fan base to get him propelled to the front like Ultimate Warrior like was literally a product of McMahon saying and that's why people hated Jim Hellwig because they're like you didn't earn your fucking dues to get to yeah. where you are and then you all of a sudden win the, the the title belt from Hogan even though I love Ultimate Warrior I'm just saying he was literally a, a an industry plant. Like he yeah. wasn't he like all the other wrestlers were like what the fuck is going on this guy comes out of nowhere because he's got a bodybuilder physique he looks great but he's a terrible wrestler and he's an asshole on top of it and you just give him the fucking belt I don't know I and I'm not saying Roman Reigns is like that but I just feel like Roman Reigns there's something I, I I don't know man I just never I never connected with that guy and I feel like he was the wrong guy to put all your bets on to lead the WWE into the new era. Yeah, and they get and he had the stupidest he has the stupidest finishing move ever. It's a Superman punch. Guy jumps up there and goes ah, like it goes against all the physics of a punch. Oh, a man. and then his other move is just a spear. It's just a stolen from Goldberg spear. Like there's nothing special or cool about. And it. And by the way, just I don't want to hear any hate in the comments because I don't watch wrestling at all anymore. But I've watched, I have seen Roman Reigns wrestle, and I did watch a few matches with him uh, years ago, and I always thought that guy. He's mid tier. He always was a mid card. I don't know why he's like somehow yeah. they they keep pushing this like this big dick in your face saying suck it. You know you want to suck it. <laughs> and yeah. You said no, you several. You're like no, I don't want that. No, like no means yes. Take it. And what I've noticed is that AEW created such a divide between fans that there's a bunch of fans that used to like actually request things of WWE. Like, no, I, I want it to be this way. But now saying anything about WWE bad means that like you're an AEW person. So like they're I like, know. I will I will blow anything WWE gives me and act like it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And it's like, I don't even care about all that shit. I'm just watching it. I only watch like one wrestling, two wrestling events a year. And I watch yeah. WrestleMania and I judge what they're doing not knowing shit about it but i'm like as an outsider i'm like that sucks that's terrible monday night raw used to be better than what some of this wrestlemania shit i'm watching now is the well, attitude era was so much better than any of this uh, first it's off crazy. nitro was, was superior but that show was amazing uh it was yeah, superior loved it they were live and the nwo was one of the greatest storylines to ever be told period ever yeah like period it's never gonna be the same uh, no never and but here's the thing also and i know people are gonna get mad about this but again i I feel like TNA, AEW, they've always been like very shallow shadows of what WCW was. When I heard TNA was coming, I actually thought, I was like, cool, man, we're going to have like a resurgence of this WCW type of attitude, you know, whatever, like, you know, taking them head on. And it, it just never, and then AEW came out and then I was like, nah, that ain't it. I don't know. They, yeah. They, I feel like maybe it'll never happen again. WCW was just so unique in that time in the late 90s. It was so like lightning in a bottle. You'll never have it again. So maybe it'll never happen. I don't know. It just sucks, dude, because before WCW went bankrupt because of bad business decisions and, and people being stupid, it like it made WWF back then better. And yeah. it made WCW better because they were going head to head. It was like Pepsi and Coke. And now, yeah. and when, once you re remove the competition, who fucking cares? You don't have and to I, put out a great product anymore. I'm with you, dude. I was I was Nitro all the fucking way. Nitro was way better than WWF then to me. In my like, opinion, it, it was. Dude, it I was mean, amazing. Stone Cold and The Rock were great, but dude, that storyline with the Sting, what Sting, and and then Hulk Hogan becoming turning heel was DDP fucking was fucking great. Yeah, but dude, like literally Hulk Hogan becoming heel at Bash at the Beach was the singular, in my opinion, one of the most singular event, maybe the singular event in the 90s yeah like that shit was awesome. like that was like 
like that was over a decade of being a good guy and Hulk Hogan, the face of like, say your prayers, eat your vitamins and all this stuff. And just becoming yeah. a bad guy, fucking genius, dude. Like I, I that might be, I, I think it's the, it's the definitive moment in wrestling in the nineties. I will say. Mm -hmm. I'll go there with you. And then like, again, stone cold and shit was great. But that was kind of that kind of took off, I think, after the WCW crash. Mm -hmm. But Mike Parton says, I'd rather talk about love juice, especially from you guys. We is that a lot of juice. Yeah, is that a wrestler? <laughs> love juice is a wrestler. Love juice. I don't know. I think this was beforehand, before we even started the wrestling thing that we went oh, down. Shit. By the way, sorry uh -huh. for movie fans if you don't know the wrestling stuff. But that, that was just a, a side travel. You know how it goes. Sometimes we just talk about shit. If if, if love juice is not a, if love juice is not a wrestler. That's a crime. <laughs> yeah, I'm the love. Like, just... Yeah, I don't know what was your finishing move be. <laughs> you got to be real careful about how you have you have you. How you He's going like... for the squirter off the no, top rope. You got you know no 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 no. His his finisher move would be called the juicy juice. <laughs> and, and then I the, I don't know squeeze. I don't know about, I I got the name now you got to come up with the move. It's called the yeah. juicy juice. <laughs> Or the fresh squeeze. Maybe puts, we like you in his like, butt you, cheeks. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you like you do like a belt, like what are they like a like a frogger splash off the top rope, but you're like <laughs> yeah. juicing. I don't know. Oh, oh that, Mike said it was when we were talking about squirting, so that makes sense. Like that, yeah. The the squirter shot. He's going for the squirter shot. That's good too. <laughs> uh, Taylor Paulson. His name was Taylor Paulson. Says this new girl at my work is a fan of horror, and oh. that's pretty rad. We talk Scream and Halloween. Hey, you marry her. What the hell are you doing? Don't talk got, to us about it. You got the door has been open for you to put one foot in. Just, just the tip. Ouch, ouch! You're on my hair. Anything could happen, Taylor. Good luck, buddy. Good for luck. Years in there. I searched for the opening of that door, and I finally found it at work. I never thought it would happen, and now you're here <laughs> talking to us, Taylor. Stop it. Anything could happen. Go on the adventure. There are no rules. Put your shit back on. Jordan Decker. I guess uh, I like that picture. That's cool. Uh, Tim C, Holly Roxy, Michael Parton, Tomo. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? I'm back. Jay, Mike, you owe me some nudies. Money well spent. Well, well, they were sent to you a long time ago, Jordan. You never responded, so we took it as an insult, and we just it dried up. We're not doing yeah. that anymore. Yeah. That we ship has sailed, uh, sir. We used to give out nudes like so often, you know, just this we're trying to promote the business, you know, and um, some of those are still out I like there. How, but I like how Jordan came in like fucking CM Punk calling out people from the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was shooting. Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it a shoot or is it real life? We don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I did get a guy one time offered me on Facebook to uh, offer me two grand to give him a live flex show on Facebook to take off my it. shirt. He's like, you don't have to show me your dick or anything. He's like, just take off your shirt for like 10 minutes and like just do some flexes. And he offered me like two or five grand, something like something crazy. I showed it to my wife and she was like, guess what she said? You should have done it. She said, do it. Why don't you do it? I was like, yeah. I'm not fucking doing that. That's stupid. And hey, it's gonna be this. Hey, just show your pee pee on camera. Get show hey. your pee pee. Five thousand dollars. Show your pee pee. Who cares? Hippie girl, acid cigarette, fifty cents. I don't know. What do you think? It's tonight the night. And away we go. Get up there and shake his wiener around. <laughs> Act like a merman. <laughs> Dude, that's what I would have done. I would have done a dance number. I'd have tease with my shirt. I'd be like, who wants to see what's behind the green door? <laughs> the green door. <laughs> When somebody was behind him watching it as you did it, and he's like, This shit kind of seemed gay. <laughs> the cream. And he's door. like, That's the point. Get out of here. <laughs> oh fuck. Nerds I view. Hey Mike and Jay. Thanks, buddy. Uh, what horror movies are there that you guys never watched in theaters but wish you saw in movie theaters? I'm mm, 24, so I wish I saw the thing, alien, and scream in theaters. Ooh. Um the green man, door. Well, I, I would say any of the any of the uh any of the horror movies from the 80s i mean uh and and late 70s i mean halloween i would have been a great and phenomenal to see in the movie theater um any of the halloween sequels would have been great halloween 4 would have been amazing uh i literally there's like a there's a whole catalog like i i couldn't imagine like how cool it was i mean i think the 90s was great and we love the 90s i mean we are uh 90s kids for sure because we were you know our formative years were in the nineties, but we were born in the eighties, but we didn't get to enjoy it. But I couldn't imagine like growing up in the eighties and being like, you know, 16 or 17 and looking in the newspaper for movies playing and, and watching TV for the, the commercials or the trailers. And you saw a nightmare in Elm street, uh, fucking, um, the fly. Um, yeah. What I mean, whatever, you know, the new Jason movie, all that stuff. How cool would that be? I, I just think it would be so amazing. 
aliens. Uh, I, it would have been amazing, but I'm yeah. I don't. The only thing I, my mind goes directly to the Exorcist, but I can't really do that because I saw the Exorcist on the big screen. But I'll tell you, that was an experience. Haven't already seen the movie, and I saw it in like an old like Victorian type of theater, or whatever. It was like crusty and old. And dude, I'm telling you, when you watch The Exorcist on the big screen and that white face like ah, nah, pops up in the darkness <laughs> like that, yeah. like it really fucks with you in a cellular level. Like it's fucked up. You ever get a chance to see The Exorcist on the big screen? Do I'm it. not watching that shit on the big screen. There's no fucking. It's like lick our cut, you stupid cunty cunt. <laughs> lick our cut. Oh Fuck my god. You imagine uh, working at movie tavern and that's when you have to bring the popcorn in just at that scene when you start stabbing <laughs> your pussy. Are you like? Oh. <laughs> you're flopping popcorn everywhere like oh my god <laughs> that would have been fucking wild uh there's not a whole lot though that i can actually think of i would have i know this sounds crazy i wish i could have seen like halloween 4 and halloween 6 and the big that's screen. what i mean in the 80s those are 80s though yeah that would that would be dope oh did he say a different year no i'm just saying but i feel oh. like 80s was like we grew up in the 90s so we did get to see a lot of the movies in the 90s yeah the 80s I though to, to have seen scream on the big screen that was cool that was awesome. Yeah, I never, I never cared enough. But I mean, I, I, I like, I liked it on VHS when I watched it. It was great on VHS as well. There's no doubt about that. Nighttime. There's a 108 year old film from the year 1916 called Friday the 13th. I was shocked, but it existed. That's wild. They should sue fucking Sean Cunningham for goddamn copyrights, and they wouldn't get out of this goddamn court shit. That yeah, we're but in does Sean everything. Cunningham? Do they own Friday the 13th? It's just a fucking date on the calendar. How can you own that shit? Yeah, I, I don't know, but they I mean, do. That's like the Fine Brothers on YouTube trying to like, remember they try to claim all the React yeah. shit? Yeah, the no React videos. Dumb shits. God damn. I mean, I, I knew you were stupid because I looked at your face, but I didn't know you were that dumb. I don't. I think that worked out well for them because I haven't heard about them since, to be honest with you. No, because they apologized in a stupid way, but. Yeah, and they're just gone. Gotta be! Mike, do you think they'll make a sequel to Roadhouse? Well, I did hear that Jake Gyllenhaal just signed a huge fucking first look picture deal with Amazon Pictures, so a lot of people think that there's multiple Roadhouse, because Roadhouse was one of the most watched Amazon projects ever, I read, I believe. That's dumb. Um, I don't want to do that. So, watch it, Jay. Just fucking watch it. No, I mean, I'm saying, like, Roadhouse is like a one shot. I mean, it was great. One shot. You don't need to have a sequel to it. Do not miss your chance to blow. But You know what? What if they had done a sequel to South Pole? That could have been the new Rocky. I'd have been into that. Jay and I love Southpaw. The world didn't get it. It didn't work. But Southpaw fucking rules. If you guys need a cry movie, fucking watch Southpaw. Multiple or, cries. Or uh, the Iron Claw. They both. I was going to say it was the Iron Claw before the Iron Claw, it but nobody funny. watched like, it. Somebody it already compiled uh, all the reactors at the the, the 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 reactors reacting to the end of Iron Claw when he says, "I used to be a brother." Everybody fucking already compiled. Everybody fucking loses their shit. Everybody does. Dude, I can't. I, I, I that, that's that one of the me. that's one of the most fucking heartbreaking ass scenes. Like it really. Yeah. But I, I swear to Christ, dude, Zach Efron did such a good job. I feel like he should have been up for an Academy or something. Like he Fuck did yeah. such a great fucking job in that movie. Yeah, they dicked that entire movie, man. They screwed it over bad at the Oscars. Uh, Hector Rodriguez, good to see, you, buddy. Says, "God, I love, I love your picture, dude. It's so emo. It's like I'm looking, but I'm not. But I'm looking, but I'm not. <laughs> no, it, what he looks like, he's like, would you dance?" <laughs> if i asked you to dance you got that uh would you like, cry yeah nice let lady me be hiding, your hero hiding. baby all right you're already handsome. well you're as handsome as enrique iglesias is what i'm saying yeah, without the mole you look great buddy guys love you what are your thoughts on alien romulus that's giving creepy space vibes i think it looks fucking awesome dude i just think no it's problem. stupid that they're trying to make aliens part of ancient rome that's stupid like, they, <laughs> they, they won't even ground them no i they they look the we did a uh uh, Mike did a uh, solo reaction, but we did a reaction together too. I, I think it looked creepy, dude. It looks, I feel like the opening, it looks very uh, much, and I know people didn't like that, but it looks like a Zack Snyder type of like old school horror with a little bit of like um, rock and roll to it. I don't know. I loved it. I thought the opening was just, was just <coughs> the, the right amount of like um, thriller horror but it didn't it didn't give away too much and i hope they don't give away i don't i, I know there's going to be another trailer eventually i just hope they don't oh here's a three and a half minute fucking trailer where we show yeah. you everything that happened because i want to have like i want to be shocked i want to be surprised and to be honest man if they release another trailer just like that one i think that's all they have to do but i think fede alvarez with what he did with evil dead 2013 is the perfect man for this job and i think that movie is going to be fucking huge in the horror community when it comes out i think it's going to blow people's dicks off i have High, 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 high hopes for Alien Romulus. Maybe more than any other movie apart from Deadpool Wolverine this year. That's my highest. But, yeah, so, oh, yeah. I, now I was reminded. I don't remember. Uh, Kyle maybe asked it 
uh, what movie are you, what movie we were looking forward to the most? I had to go through and I, I pull three because I think that was the number one. I think that was your number one too. And I think it was mine too. Yeah, it's it's hard to look past that Deadpool and Wolverine. Like, dude, I get so excited when they show any Deadpool Wolverine stuff. I almost like check out and go to a different place. I'm like, I can't oh, even yeah, I show I how excited I am. I feel like I'm fucking old. I was like, I didn't even say Deadpool and Wolverine. I was like, Deadpool three, the third. I, Deadpool yeah. three. But I thought yeah, it was just I, called. I forgot it was called Deadpool and Wolverine. I, th I think it is. I could be wrong about that. I don't know. That's just the way it is in my head. But yeah, definitely those two for sure. I love webs. Shoot some. I, I, you guys are my comfort and happiness. Thank you so much. Hey man, Sad thank face, you. Heart pumpkin. You know what? And I love your profile pic because that's what I look like when I look down at my wife. It's like, why didn't you come yet? <laughs> it's been two minutes. <laughs> you should be done by now. Uh, I thought I went. <laughs> so now I have to. What I have to do extra work. You, you know, you I have done. high blood pressure. I don't like this. Yeah, I'm, I've been thinking about baseball for a minute and a half. It's dangerous. I minutes. have potato salad. Like, it raised my blood pressure. <laughs> I didn't think it happened. <laughs> it's got uh, damage in it. All right, you guys are after us, too, buddy. It's so it's so good to be back doing this shit. It feels great. We love you guys so much, and thank you. Uh, Michael Parton, speaking of Heroes, heard they're rebooting it. I, the TV yeah. show, yeah. Yeah, but, dude, I don't know. Like, listen, Heroes was really cool when it came out. Uh, Michael, well, no, I not. Vincent McGlego, I can't say it. I don't. Vincent McGlego, the Rocky Milligan son, and Rocky Milligan. Balboa. Yeah, it was a good show, and Hayden Panettiere was in it. Uh, it was a good show. I liked it when it came out, it, but it burned out after like three or four seasons. I remember why, and being intrigued every episode because they had like some jaw droppers, and then I, I don't know what happened. Like it lost momentum, or they the the writers got careless and they they didn't write any more intriguing stories. But I remember quickly like burning out. And not caring anymore. And I forgot that it even ended. You know what I mean? So, I, I like, rebooting it, I don't know. I, I'd i rather them do uh, do a, a movie based on, or a show based on uh, Rising Stars. The the uh, the comic book, the graphic novel, what was a comic book, uh, that came out years ago. And it's kind of the same concept as Heroes. Um, but, anyway. I, I'm, I have probably no interest in watching it. Because you know it's going to be, like, fucking Justin Bieber Hot Boys. In every fucking Swings. team, yeah. Swings. They're well, they're all gonna be like guys that are like extremely hot and good looking. That it's like, of course, you have fucking superpowers. Meanwhile, the fat nerd that works part time at Starbucks gets no powers and gets made fun yeah. of by you dickheads. No. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I don't like it. I never. I I couldn't get through the first season of the original show, so I don't give a fuck. Mercurio Andy says, "Hey boys, you seen the trailer for Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead remake? It sucks my butt." What Steve, the dude. fuck? No, I didn't know they did that. That bitch has what positive, dude. It has, I watched 12 seconds of the trailer and turned oh it off. Oh my God. It has a fucking fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes. The, the critics are loving it. I won't watch that. Between the fans and the critics, are, I've never been more clear. Oppenheimer. <laughs> that uh, movie's going to make shit, 1997 dude. at the box office. I mean, come on. I didn't ask you to fucking fresh, frisk the, what is, what is the couch? Fuck a Fr French toast. Frisk, frisk the couch. It, it needed it. <laughs> Dude, I, I, why I, that's that's like the most pointless movie you can remake of uh, all the pointless movies you can remake. Why you why do the this fuck? to be the three? Why you do this to be three? That's the uh, dumbest shit you could. That that again, there are movies that are lightning in a bottle. That movie is a lightning in a bottle type of film. It doesn't need a remake. I'm actually surprised they didn't make it a, a fucking CW miniseries because like that just seems like what Hollywood would do anyway. Yeah. They made it enough. You know, oh my god, I can't even imagine the fucking stupidity that's going to come out of that movie. Like, like just the, the oh my, I'm not. I just yeah, have no it, interest. It like the, the original's right there. Like you can watch, just watch the. Nobody watches the original. Why are we remaking it? And nowadays, the kids don't even have computers. fucking babysitters. They have goddamn AI and fucking TikTok watching them. <laughs> you don't need that yeah. shit. I got a robot I can fuck. I don't need to watch this movie. Joe Valentine, a Blair Witch reboot before Pumpkinhead? Your opinion? I don't oh, like yeah. that. I don't have like you, that. Did you hear about Blair Witch, by the yeah, way? Well, I did. We heard it from a mutual friend. I didn't know they were... I thought it was a sequel. Oh, that's right. Reboot. I forgot. I forgot Eric Texas. I, yeah. Uh, uh, Blumhouse I, is oh. remaking the fucking movie. It's a remake by fucking Blumhouse. First off, that's stupid. Uh, yeah. I didn't say it in the text message because Eric might be interested and I didn't want to like hurt his feelings. But I will say <laughs> a pumpkin head reboot would make sense. I don't want Blumhouse touching it though. I think a pumpkin. Now, you know what? I, I, I take that back. Pumpkin head is perfectly fine where it is. Stan Winston did an, an incredible job with the effects and he was a great director. And you also have um, uh, what's his name? Bishop. I can't. Uh, 
Uh, Lance Henriksen. Lance Henriksen as an amazing protagonist throughout the entire movie. Could that movie be remade? Yes, of course it could. And it might be good, but they're just going to do CGI and it's going to be awful. So, you know, as a matter of fact, I don't know. I don't think either one of these movies should be remade. Blair Witch, again, a lightning in a bottle fucking film. It was a redefining moment in cinema. You can't fucking capture it again. They, yeah. I thought they already kind of did a soft reboot when they did the Blair Witch uh, 2014 or whatever the yeah. fuck it was. The worst part of the, about the Blumhouse news, though, is that it's not just Blair Witch. That's what they're starting with. But Lionsgate is giving Blumhouse a first look deal to remake all of their titles that they mm -hmm. want. So they're going to take all these Lionsgate properties and just do these soulless corporate fucking remakes and probably make them PG-13 so that kids can watch. Um, it's, it's, it's just fucking terrible. It's bad news bears for everyone. Blumhouse has lost their way. You, you yeah. lost the scholarship. You can't go. Like yeah, it's, Blumhouse it's over. has become the TikTok equivalent is like lick this toilet seat and post it. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I get like, dude, I get where Jason Blum's coming from. If I had a movie studio and someone was like, hey, do you want to do a Blair Witch? I'm like, fuck, yeah, that sounds awesome. Friday, third thing, whatever you fucking want. That sounds awesome. But the problem with Blumhouse is where they have this first look deal on them, themselves with Universal, they put out nothing but demographic swathing fucking uh, like generic ass horror movies now yeah. that are created by AI and made in a fucking bubble. If, if, if you had the choice to do it, fine. But we know you're not going to do anything interesting with it at this point. We know yeah, you're just going to do I, it to I, I sell like, as many tickets as possible, and that's it. Yeah, I feel like uh, Blumhouse, they've done some good stuff, but I feel like they're creatively not bankrupt. Not lately is the problem. No, yeah. I said they've done some good stuff but in yeah. the past, but they're creatively bankrupt at this point. And I, and I, I don't – after what they did with Halloween, to be fair, I don't want them touching any IPs for a while. Like, like original IPs, I go and create some new shit and do some original stuff in-house and let's see how that pans out yeah. and maybe get some footing back to where you used to be. And then maybe we can discuss some other things, but I don't know why you would touch Blair Witch at all. Cause Blair Witch is already a good movie. It doesn't need a remake. It really, I mean, it's already, yeah, people can't recreate sick, that. And yeah, I get that, but it doesn't. Yeah. Fuck the, you, you. the, the reason why Blair Witch was so successful, by the way, was it was a late nineties movie that came out when the internet was still young and they used viral marketing that had never been done before. And they convinced people that this shit was real. And that really what that, that, this is, they took a $30,000 movie and made it like a multi-million dollar because of the time it was in the right time. And it came out at the right time. And because it was original, like now we've all yeah, heard of original. Blair Witch. Like I understand a Blair Witch sequel, or you trying to go somewhere new, but to remake it, to do a remake is the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard. Yeah, in, they're in, gonna have like some fucking iCarly girl from fucking <laughs> you know Nickelodeon like running around, be like I don't know where we're lost. It's like use GPS, GPS got fucking it, gun dog, and then like <laughs> use chat I GPT, my bitch. I gotta huh? change my battery. Uh, oh. Two sex. I'll be back in the shake okay. of the lamb. Yeah, and as far as Pumpkinhead goes. Um, I've thought about it before. Pumpkinhead, it, with the right studio, it could work as a, as a remake. Because I do feel that Pumpkinhead is an underappreciated horror movie. Unlike Blair Witch. Everybody knows Blair Witch. Blair Witch was a trailblazer. It was a juggernaut when it came out. It changed cinema as far as horror goes in a lot of ways. Um, not like, well, no, it did. I mean, it, it introduced the found footage genre. But Pumpkinhead is is a it's always been like a, a grim fairy tale to me, like a gothic horror story that it came out and it was sandwiched in the late 80s between like you know um there was Hellraiser and 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 a new Nightmare on Elm Street and a, and a Halloween and some other stuff. It, it it never really got the exposure that I think I feel like it deserved. Pumpkinhead for me was always an underrated movie. I think Stan Winston did an incredible job on not only like again makeup effects and effects. But as a director, I think he was amazing. And, and like, it, like again, it goes back and it tells like a very Grimm's fairy tale type of story that works. Now it could be remade because being remade by a big studio would give it more exposure and more people would go out and see it, which I think it deserves. But at the same time, I don't trust fucking modern Hollywood. I don't yeah. trust modern fucking studios. I would if Pumpkinhead was going to be remade, I'd rather a small independent company take it on and try to do it. Versus like Blumhouse, who is like at this point they're becoming the fucking wax museum of Hollywood. <laughs> they're just yeah. fucking they're just pulling in like some old ass shit. And like we're gonna wax them up and make them like accessible to the crowds. I don't know, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, I'm with I feel like you. I'm running. I feel like I'm running for uh, fucking office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a crook. I just use two fingers sometimes on my wife because she enjoys it better than the single one because it makes it feel thicker. A plus is less. So that's why it's <laughs> <laughs> running gun. It entertainment hey guys it's starfleet here sorry for the name chains i'm starting a youtube channel and would like some advice from dr loomis and dr chalice please okay well i'll let you go i gotta go to the bathroom really bad so uh, we can we can we can pause it do it when you get back we'll do it when you get back we'll okay, do it when you I'll, get back right, i'll be right back enjoy the pp room enjoy your special time alone in the pp room but run and gun while you're waiting you get to know that jay is going to be holding his golden dick in his hands while we wait to see the response to that for sure gary b actually you know what i'll give you doc i'll give you dr chalice's opinion first and then when jay gets back he can give you loomis's and uh uh do you want to start a youtube channel what you want to do is you want to uh say that you're a doctor okay and you're a doctor and you go to your favorite watering hole and you have you wear a white coat at the bar and uh you make sure they don't have the tv channel on anything you don't want the tv channel to be on and you tell them turn it off could you change that shit i've been trick-or-treated to death and then you sit there and you set up an iphone uh in front of you and uh you just tell the people what you think you know and uh basically you just do it to get ass you know because that's what uh, doctors do if a woman knows that you're a doctor she will take a nap with you uh on the job you guys can nap together um you can find some black women uh in the hospital to slap on the bottom and uh pretty much if you are a doctor and you can just take naps uh with black women and smack them on the butts then there's really nothing better in life than that so it really doesn't matter what the youtube channel does um you can just ignore your kids uh definitely don't show up to do anything with them unless it's to buy uh halloween masks and then it doesn't matter because there's going to be a takeover and they're going to die. Um, they're going to die. Uh, you can scream, turn it off all you want to. Turn it off. Like I, I think of the white, the memories of my ex-wife and how many times I cheated on her. I said, turn it off in my brain and they don't stop. So, uh, yeah, uh, black women is basically uh, how you start a YouTube channel. <laughs> And that was not me that said any of that stuff. Don't listen to anything I said, kids. That was Dr. Chalice. I did not. That was not me. Do not come for me. All right. Although I love black women as much as the next guy. Love all women, to be honest with you. Uh, don't uh, don't come for me, though. Gary B. Mike, have you had a chance to read any of my DMs on Patreon? I don't think I have. Shockingly enough, I uh, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I'll check. Okay. I will check, Gary, and I appreciate the Inquisition. Okay? I do. JT Customs! Come face! That's that deep Deadpool. Deadpool. Deadpool is working. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, if we haven't been canceled yet, we won't be tomorrow. Kevin Feige says that Deadpool is going to work on his own popcorn bucket. What will it be? Will it outdo the Dune 2 popcorn bucket? I saw the Deadpool bucket, and it's uh, the Deadpool bucket. The Deadpool bucket. The Deadpool bucket. You try fucking say it. Everybody together right now. Say Deadpool bucket. Deadpool bucket. There, I got it. It's harder than you think. Um. Anyways, I saw a picture of the Deadpool bucket, and it was adorable. <laughs> but it's Deadpool's face that his mouth's wide open. So there's so many jokes you can make about that. I saw in the theater the other day. I was there to see a movie. I forgot what it was because it probably sucks. Most movies do these days. I saw the another trailer for Deadpool Wolverine, and it just got me so excited, man. Like... Jesus Christ, in the fucking opening of the trailer for Deadpool 3, Ryan Reynolds made a pegging and Disney joke. Like, we're in good hands. It's going to be fucking fine, everybody. It's going to be fine. Um, Hi. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. It will stop itching one day if you just stop scratching. How is your wiener? Is it relieved of its duties? It's not relieved of its duty. It's on temporary holiday, but it did <laughs> pee. At ease, soldier. Um, so I did. I went ahead and did uh, run and guns thing. So before I, uh, before I go, if you could just give as Loomis run and guns some uh, some. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, YouTube channel advice, right? Quick. Yeah. Um, here's the advice. You take a laptop. You open it up like this. 
You see, like this, you see. And then you start typing. And, you know, you don't go on porn sites. I know you probably would want to. And you type in, um, you type in careerbuilder.com. And you look for job openings. And you'll go get a goddamn job. YouTube is for suckers and idiots. What are you doing? What do you got to bring to the world that no one else knows about, huh? What do you got? So you better have it. Stone fucking cold. You got to have something to go and say, I know about this topic and I want to talk about it. What's your name? <laughs> Starfleet? You want to talk about goddamn Star Trek? Klingons and shit? Shut up. <laughs> I would rather you'd be working at goddamn Walmart spray painting a fucking store than talking to me about goddamn Klingons and Spock shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sparks so, up. I would, I would say, do it as a hobby. If it starts doing something for you, they quit your job and do it. Otherwise, get a goddamn job. <laughs> Stop asking two losers on the internet. Hey, I want to be a YouTube star. What could I do? Go pay your fucking bills. <laughs> with real Die. <laughs> Die, Michael. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. like Loomis would not be there. like Loomis always reminds me of, like some crotchety ass old man he would be the last one that would understand <laughs> what fucking YouTube was at all and say like, <laughs> like, get a fuck job. like if he was like if you're coming in for an interview like oh I was a I was an influencer on YouTube it's like so you were gay <laughs> I could also I could also picture you walking in Loomis's office and he just discovered YouTube and he's like <laughs> he's like dying laughing he's like are you seeing this yeah, it's like there's a there's a goddamn cat that plays a piano. <laughs> I don't have time to talk to Michael right now. I'm watching <laughs> I'm watching Vine. <laughs> uh, Nighttime said, "Notice all screen movies have zero nudity in them." Um, don't yeah, you uh, cough on me midstream, you dirty little pit bull whore! My dog coughed on me. Jesus Christ! It's, it's fine. I'm gonna beat canceled? it later when the camera's off. <laughs> Your wife is sitting five feet from you, and you talk to her like that. <laughs> um. So. Uh, yeah, no, that's I, yeah, that's true. I, I, well, I guess Neff Campbell was that before Wild Things. Scream one, the original Scream. Yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred percent. It was before. Did, did that, she so. have boob? Did she have even a, maybe even a good porno? Did she have boobage in uh, in Wild Things? Wild I'm pretty things? sure. I'm pretty sure everybody was naked in that movie. Even Kevin yeah. Bacon showed his tits. So. Yeah, that's true though. But that, it's a good well, point it, though. It's not the first. Is it the? No, it's not the first horror movie not to have titties in it. Like as far as serial killer, like or you know, like a slasher film. The fucking Scream mask just fucking moved. Out of the corner of my eye, I swear to God. Yeah, I saw, was, oh, it's like, the wind blowing its little cape. <laughs> it tripped me up, though. I was fucked like, up. Nudity and not, no nudity in our films. We tried, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we did our best. But you're right. That's a good point. There is none. Uh, Lee the Machine fucking Bauer says, finally, Roman title reign in, Roman's title reign ended at WrestleMania 40. Cody finished his story, and The Undertaker appeared out of nowhere with a choke slam and rocked the best WrestleMania ever. Ooh. Lee, I love you, and I love you till the cows come home, and I'll come over and make you a cheese grill sandwich and we'll eat it together and love each other and cuddle naked like men because we're best friends it's not gay and if it was that's even better my point is this i didn't think it was the best wrestlemania ever i i thought that they 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 made a really good effort but it was it's, it's the best okay i'll say it's the best modern wrestlemania i've ever seen out of like the past 10 wrestlemanias that i've watched it's definitely the best of those i will say that i'll be with you there it's okay lee I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> li, 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 li. All right. Uh, my shoelace is not untied, Luke, you fucking dick. But, Jay, I'm going to go pee. We are at 9.08 with Luke. I'm not wearing. You guys want to see some foot shit? No. Well, this shit. Oh, God, dude. Foot Your foot. shit looks dirty as fuck, dude. Check out my foot. You look like you've been. Yeah, dude. Oh, you look like. Saw other live streams. Dude, you look like, you look like oh. you've been barefoot behind a 7 Eleven looking for coins. I can do that. That's nasty. I'll make them dude. clap. That's what I'll do. Look at that. This is what, hey guys, by the way, this is what happens when you're like, you need to get views no matter you what. Pour some beer on them. Don't do <laughs> Suck that. Suck it off. Don't do that. Because at some point, <laughs> we're going to get slammed with copyright. I don't know. <laughs> copyright. It's like, you can't show feet. Not, Not the, copyright, the but like, you know, like a uh, violation of TOS. <laughs> you show dirty toes on the fucking stream. We don't mind sucking on toes. I'll be right back. Luke Weber at uh, 8908. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm concentrating now. <laughs> Sorry, Major. Uh, yeah, you get it. It was, That's, it's too hard. I like it. <laughs> uh, uh, he says, uh, "I okay, so uh, I've missed you, beautiful girls. Oh, thank you. Uh, hope you're well. Okay. 
I'm expecting my second child any day now. Can I get a name from each of you? Mike, your shoelace is untied. Love you. Uh, congratulations, Luke. That's awesome news. Uh, I hope your child is better than you, which they probably will be. I'm kidding, Luke. I love you, dude. Uh, I think a good name, and it just rolls off the tongue. And, and you know what? It would Most people would like snark at it and say, that's not a good name. That's gross. Don't do that. But I think it's a great name. Chlamydia. 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 It's just something about it. It just sounds so exotic. You know what I mean? That's from a movie. Was it Clerks? I don't know. Clerks too. I I don't have kids. I couldn't like I would be boring. I would probably name my kid after me if it was a boy. Uh so if he Jonathan Teller Jones the third. <laughs> and so this motherfucker better be a king by the fifth. Um I don't know. Uh I always thought Riley was a cool name for a boy. A girl. Uh, well, Riley could work for a girl or a guy. So yeah, I would say Riley. Riley's a cool name. I'll let Mike Mike will answer your question for you when he comes back from Wee Wee. But thank you, Luke. Um, Brandon Ferguson, once again, uh, says, we do suck, haha, but I'm from Chicago, so I'm a diehard fan. Good thing is that tickets are so cheap, I'm sitting behind home plate for $50. Holy shit, dude, that's badass. That's great. I didn't know you guys sucked or not. I, I had no idea. I But, but it's so weird because I remember the White Sox like always like being talked about in the 90s for some reason. Like how good they were, you know what I mean? And then, and then they just nobody talked about it anymore. I, I guess you guys did sign, <laughs> but yeah, that's cool, man. Have fun, get drunk, don't drive, but get drunk and eat lots of wieners, meaning hot dogs. Have a good time, dude. Uh, Robin Barker, thank you so much. Says, uh, first off, welcome back. Please, shift. uh, these live streams are a huge part of what keeps me at least a little bit sane. Well, that's always good to hear because I always thought it just drove people to you know, find better YouTube channels. Uh, Jay, sorry for your loss. Uh, sending my best wishes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Mike, if it was up to you, how would you definitively end the Scream franchise? He would stop talking about it and he would admit that Stu died. Uh, that's, I'm going to answer for him, but that's what I would say. No, I'm kidding. All right, I'll let him know when you get when he gets back, Robin. 912 and 908. Okay, 912, 908, 912, 908. I remember those. Uh, Adrian Yabara, thank you, dude. You see, T. Kelsey graduate from college by chugging a beer, slamming the empty can off stage, and showing bro love to the dean. Oh, while Beastie Boys is playing. What the fuck is you saying? You see, T. Kelsey graduate from college by chugging a beer, slamming the empty can off stage, and showing bro love to, to the dean. All while Beastie Boys is playing. I don't know. I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> Like, I'm sure, like, it, it's referencing something, Adrian, I, but I'm sitting here like goddamn Nicholas Clay, Nicholas Cage trying to, you know, decipher the back of the Constitution. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to move to strike, and I will let Mike answer that question. I have no idea what that means. Um, oh, Adrian says, also, looks like Coach K left, tail tucked in his legs, huh? Coach K. You mean Calipari? Yeah, well, listen, I, I think um, if you're talking about John Calipari, which if, if some of you all that don't know, uh, John Calipari was our head coach for quite a while, I think since 2009 or eight, uh, he did finally, he resigned recently, um, giving up, I think he had about a $27 million contract left uh, to go to Arkansas, from what I understand. But yeah, he, him and Calipari and the, and the Wildcats, man, I feel like the time had passed a long time ago. I mean, this guy... John Calipari is a great recruiter. I think he's maybe the best recruiter I've ever seen ever in, in college basketball. But as far as a X's and O's kind of coach, no, that ain't him. Um, he relied on talent to, more than anything just to see him through in the tournament. And you can only lose so many you know times in the first fucking round or second round of the NCAA tournament with like number one recruited class before people are like, all right, man, get the fuck out of here. But he did. I don't know if it was... He knew he was going to get fired. I think that's what ultimately happened, but I appreciate it, Adrian. Um, so not tail tucked between his legs, more like I know my time is up. Uh, Dean Cream Betweens also says, Hogan's heel turn promo at Bash of the Beach 96 changed the industry. Still watch it to this day. Dude, for show. And Dean Cream Betweens knows what he's talking about because he's got the cream between. 
Uh, you're absolutely right. And I and, and I still say, I think it's the most definitive moment in the 90s as far as wrestling goes. It, it changed everything. It, it literally turned the world upside down. I mean, it went mainstream, like mainstream news. Everyone was talking about it. It was insane. Like, it was so crazy. And I remember watching that. I'm like, what the fuck is going on when I saw Hogan do that? When he dropped the leg on Macho Man. I'm like, I can't fucking believe this bullshit. And I was never a huge Hogan. I mean, I always loved Hogan, but I was always a Warrior fan. But I saw that shit, and he came in. He was supposed to rescue his boy, Slim Jim the Grim, uh, Macho Man, and he drops the fucking leg on him, and then he's, like, celebrating with, you know, Stud, Kevin, and, and Scott. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, dude, it was it was crazy. It was insane. That whole thing was insane. Because that was back also when kayfabe or kayfabe was kept up pretty high. So I was, like, I was still, in like, that imaginative, like, kid, and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe he betrayed his best friend, brother. But I, I, I agree. It changed everything. It, you're absolutely right. Uh, Michael Parton says the pop shot would be love juice. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that's a good one. I like that one too. Okay. Oh, uh, Lyric Gaming, thank you, says, What's up, dude? It's been a while. Keep killing it. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Uh, Dean Cream also says, Wrestling Miles Channel recaps every Raw and Nitro of the Monday Night War. Great nostalgia. Man, I know. And it's sad, too. It's bittersweet. Uh, thank you, Dean. It's also bittersweet because that, that was when, like, wrestling was just different back then. Like, in the late 90s, like, you're right, 96 to, like, maybe 2000. It was it, maybe 99. Um, the WCW, WWF war, the back and forth. Man, there were so many great moments in both, in both companies. And they had so many great characters and so many great storylines. It's bittersweet because you, you don't, you're never going to get that back. It's unfortunate, but you're you're absolutely right. The nostalgia is amazing. Uh, ah! oh God, it's kind of it's kind of scared me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> uh, uh, I okay. So we stopped at. Um, hold on, we were at. Um, I was just about to come. Okay, so we're Imagine. gonna be at Michael Parton, but Don't go there yet. So the, here's a question for you. I'll um, I'll ask it on their behalf. Um, I don't know, like, so Adrian Yabara left us some kind of Riddler code, and I don't know what this means. Maybe you referenced it earlier. He says, you see T. Kelsey graduate from college by chugging a beer, slamming the empty can off stage, and showing bro love to the Dean, all while Beastie Boys is playing. Whoa. I don't know what any of that shit I thought means, you might have said, I thought you were talking about something earlier. I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. No, I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea what any of that means, but I love okay. you, Adrian. Uh, yeah, he's great. And then uh, Robin Barker says, uh, and I answered for you, and you might you can you correct this if this is wrong, but he says, Mike, if it was up to you, how would you definitively end the Scream franchise? And I would say, you know, just end it and, and say, everyone, you know, Stu's dead. No. No. Fuck you. No. I think that's you know correct. what I would do? No. The, the, the way to end it is, 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 very very easy honestly is you bring Stu back and mm. you bring Stu back and then you have um that he has been running this shit for several movies he's been having his cult do his bidding for him and oh you tell God. that awesome story and then you have Sydney end it once and for all and you gotta have some great dialogue in there where she was like I'm gonna live the rest of my life in peace fuck you um and then and ends it and then basically does so in such an embarrassment. She embarrasses him on like, I don't know, maybe it's national TV or whatever, or maybe they get like some, some meta like footage of her or whatever, but she embarrasses him so badly that nobody ever wants to be Ghostface again because it's not cool anymore. And it's actually embarrassing to be Ghostface again so that nobody will ever want to take up that mantle again. And that's Meanwhile, the when he's revealing his master plan, Stu, with the brain damage, he's sitting at a diner with the Tom Cruise guy that takes care of him and say, like, they always bring the pan they, they bring the pancake mix out first. They bring the pancake <laughs> mix out first. And, and they definitely did that. We have you to go. Will of, Will of Fortune comes on at 7, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. 50 seven Cent survived getting shot nine times. Stu can take a TV he had a head, fucking right? jaw. He had a 50-pound fucking TV drop on his yeah. face that was so? plugged in. After being yeah. stabbed deep, dog. So, uh, okay. Uh, well, I can believe in miracles too. Sometimes some people say Santa Claus comes and visits children. Uh, yeah, you gotta uh, believe. Michael Parton is where we left off at nine twenty-eight. So we're at Michael Parton at nine twenty-eight. Nine twenty-eight is where we were. It's where we are. Fuck up. 
turd. I don't know where I was going with that. I was what if way, they what if they ended the, what if they ended the whole scream movie or the scream series with it was showing that scream all the screams were nothing but made for TV movies. Like it never <laughs> it's happened. All, no, yeah, no, just yeah, it, it just showed like you know, it just showed Wes Craven like directing the scene and like this <laughs> not this never happened. That would be wild. I mean, honestly, like a new nightmare version of Scream would be perfect. It'd be a perfect way to end it off on, honestly. Like that would be a great point, too. I think it would to piss actually off do that. every fucking body. That would sure. piss off everybody. Sure, sure. But it'd be fascinating. Because if you ever went back and watched Scream, like, oh, so all this bullshit is it, not even real. Yeah, I'm not saying I would want that. They would have to do it really well. Uh, the green door sounds awesome, Mike. I know what you mean by that. What's behind the green door? What is that? The green door. It's from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, it, when, uh, oh, yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio's The Green Door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit's yeah. fucking awesome. Um, I love that movie so damn much. DJ Graham! Wow, I dodged a bullet. I just called off work, and apparently there wasn't even a truck tonight. So nice. it would have been boring anyway. And do you like my new profile pic? It's Marilyn and Tupac. Is that real? Marilyn Monroe hung out with Tupac? Dude, that doesn't even make sense That's not logically. Real. Oh my god! But as far as I don't like, know timelines, if Tupac, it's if, if Tupac been fucking her for around for sure. I like it though. Marilyn would have been into Tupac. hundred percent. And she would have married someone. Not. I always loved Tupac. <laughs> oh, right. that really did happen. Yeah, that was that was actually uh, Jade Pinkett Smith, who's a wonderful person, and you should never say anything bad about him. You know, Alapisha, <laughs> The Field of Scrims podcast says the Maxine trailer has me wanting to become a fucking star. Can Wahlberg and Slenderman give me advice on how to become one? Glad you're back, Jay. Oh, man, thank you. Uh, yeah. What you want to do if you want to be a star? You got to eat fucking turkey burgers. You got to get in the gym at 5 a.m. You got to outrun the wind. You got to get out there and you got to outrun the wind. And when you when your kids come over and they're like, Dad, I want to spend some time with you, Marky Mark. I want to spend some time with you. You can take me to school. You can do anything with me if you want to. And you're like, I can't do the traffic cones at school. I get upset. I get in line to drop you off at school and the traffic cones give me a fucking panic attack. I can't fucking do it. I'm just going to go home and I'm going to tattoo Nicole on my fucking chest and I'm going to beat it. And then I'm going to come after your mother and I'm going to beat her too. I'm going to put her on a roller coaster and I'm going to finger and then I'm going to beat up her dad's red cherry. Uh, st station wagon. It wasn't a station wagon. It was, <laughs> it was a I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was a Corvette or some shit. Oh my god! If I might give a uh, mark of Darla Van X. Um, <laughs> so you want to become uh, like a super star? Be me as suppose what you trying for? All right. Well, here's what you gotta do. You gotta work really hard, right? You go to auditions. You gotta eat some dirt, right? And then you gotta keep trying. Turkey book. Stay away from Nickelodeon, dude. You don't want to go to bars. <laughs> a lot of bad things happen on bars. Um, and then, you know, like hopefully lightning strike and they say, hey, come on in here. We're going to be a part of this new Lord of the Rings reboot TV series on the Amazon. And uh, hopefully you get noticed. If you don't get noticed, well, there's always people that need to be at other jobs and professions. Nothing wrong with that. Subway Sandwich always looking for people. To help make sound with you, so you can always you do that. Make sure you have a backup plan, thing like that. And uh, you know, just don't oh, get dude. caught up. <laughs> <laughs> just don't get caught up in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Take a take a break every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're asking people that aren't stars to give you like, well, I guess Slender Man and Mark Wahlberg are stars, but yeah, in their own in their own rights. Leave the machine, Bowers. Foreign objects, I will rule. Hey, Loomis, check your underwear. Foreign <laughs> yeah. I will rule you. Woo. Check your face. It's falling off. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Big brother. Uh, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, man. Uh, not Australia. But, oh, maybe is that actually the Big Brother Australia account? It's probably a I big deal. I, Thanks for I, coming. I, I never got into I never did you guys did you guys ever watch Big Brother? I never got into that. Like I actually did I watch couldn't. Real World and I actually liked Real World. I know it was a lot a lot of it was probably like scripted. But I, yeah. I, but I could never get into Big Brother. I, I never watched it either. Uh, I never did either. My my. So we have a TV, by the way. We we got the small TV in our bathroom. Is now. it in color? So, yeah, it's in color and everything. <laughs> oh, wow, it's got a fire stick in it. But Pepsi you can colors. sit in the you can sit in the bath and watch TV. And there's a and I went in there. My wife was in there today, and she was watching. Uh, hey, Kate, Katie, Katie, take your headphones out. What, what were you watching today when you were taking a bath? My big fat American gypsy wedding. My big fat American gypsy wedding. I thought it was just uh what's the show you used to watch? The the New Jersey guys? Jersey. Oh, Jersey Shore? Yeah, I thought it was just the Jersey Shore guys, but these uh, these chicks were like beating the shit out of each other outside of a church house. It, it was wild. It I'm gonna watch that uh, shit. Is it on A and E? Uh I wanna say it's on A and E. Yeah. Uh, I 
I was on Prime oh. on the Fire Stick, so you can find him. My big God fat damn, American. You got, you got a TV in your fucking bathroom. Hugh Hefner fucking suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shitty well, time. Well, I'm taking a I, bubble I, bath. I like to I'm, watch the news and maybe the I, stock market. I'm so excited to use it. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm Mike, very excited. Uh, Mike, about it. Mike likes to lounge in in the bubble bath and have that uh, that phone that looks like Zach Morris's phone. I'd be like, <laughs> I uh, would like to buy a stock in that Apple. Yeah, <laughs> light it up. I told you to light it up. Uh, Big Brother AU says they need to remake the burning from the 80s and turn it into a franchise. The yeah, burning. that could work today. It's that the sounds... one with the big shears. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know. A fr- I don't know a franchise, though. I don't know. I always thought that movie was super fucking overrated. It's hard to actually watch. Yeah, in my opinion. It's not People bad. Really it's love just, it. Yeah, no. But that's the kind of movie you do remake. You don't remake classics. You re- remake movies that were cool ideas that kind of sucked. Those are what deserve remakes. So that's perfect. My yeah. pot in. My in. My <laughs> in. Uh, would you. How y'all uh, feeling? <laughs> would you, who would you call the franchise killer? Jason Blum or David Gordon Green? I've been a Blumhouse hater since they fucked up Jim and the Holograms. They fucked up a lot uh, of my feet. Well, you know, listen. I, I think if you're going to lay it at the feet of anybody, you're going to have to lay it at the feet of um, Jason Blum. Uh, because ultimately what uh, what happens and, and the storylines that get out and, and the direction, even though I know it's David Gordon Green's movie, that comes from Blum. Like he has the final say or write off on anything that's coming out of David Gordon Green, essentially. Um, yep. So, and again, I like I feel bad about saying that because, I mean, they have made good movies in the past. It's not like I mean, they've made some shitty things. It doesn't erase all the good things they've done, but. I, I feel like what happens is, it, well, it's like Rocky Three. We talked about Rocky Three. You get up to a certain level, you start becoming a diva. You don't think you could do any wrong, and everything you're gonna, you know, shit out is gold, and you become like Veruca Salt in the fucking Willy Wonka movies. Like, I want it now, Daddy. Give me the goose that lays the golden egg. Like you just like you're just like literally yelling and, and and trying to scream for all these franchises to remake because you think that you can't do any wrong, and that's just not the case. But I would say you have to lay it at the feet of Blum, Jason Blum. So. I would agree with that too because oh, like with all the reshoots and stuff like that, I think there was things that David Gordon Green was doing. But as the producer, as the company studio owner, you got to see what he does with one movie into the next movie, and be like, "This was a problem. Your indecision was a problem on Halloween yeah. Kills. Your indecision was a problem on Halloween Ends." And then to let him take that same indecision and those same missteps, and to give them as much as they paid for exorcist for The Exorcist, um, and to have let him do those same things, that is on Blum one hundred percent. And I'm not yeah. like I don't think studios should interfere with movies, but dude, they gave him a long fucking leash with Halloween, and I, I love all those movies, I do, but like still, there's a lot of problems, you know. Yeah. So I, I yeah, like listen, there's a reason why um, you're a producer and not a director and, or a yeah. writer. Like, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I would never want to be either one of those things, writer or director. Of, of a big franchise like that. But if I'm a producer and I know my job, I know my role and I shut my hole. That's what your fucking job is. You make so sure I'm that stay you... in bed tonight. Know your role and shut your hole, but open that one. Is that, are, this sounds like a truck. Except girl. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, no, at the end of the day. Yeah. I, I, you gotta lay it on Blum. But yeah. I totally agree with that. Good question, though, Mike. Uh, JD Customs. I hope Blair Witch is good. It depends on who's writing and directing it. I'll pick Rob Savage because host and dash came were scary. It better be our dude. Rob Savage would give me a little bit. I would start to feel things move in my pants if they if they announced that because he's a really good found footage director. That's a great fucking pick, JT Customs. Holy shit. But I, still, remaking Blair Witch is so fucking dumb. Like anybody who who has any understanding of movies like would realize that the one stupidest movie you could remake in, in today's day and age is the Blair Witch Project. I think, yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a weak type of movie it, it, to remake. I'm not saying the movie's weak. I just feel like it's, it's so low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? Like, it just feels like something that like, like a, like a guy that just got out of college. Would be like, I, I got to remake that movie. That that's the, you know, cause it's easy. Yeah. And I'm not saying the movie is easy necessarily, but it's in, in, in like in today's world to remake that movie. I mean, come on. It's not going to be that hard to do. I mean, all you know what you're going to do. They're going to put CG shit in it. It's going to be fucking cast with all the Nickelodeon stars. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like not, you know, like young up and comer. It, it's going to be cringy. There's going to be TikTok references. It's going to be dumb as fuck. Um, I would imagine, though, if they remake it, I they're going to have a director. Uh, I, I could see them. I swear to God, dude, I could see them contacting uh, James Wan to do it. James Wan doing it would be interesting too. Well, I'll be shocked if they don't do 
I'm shocked that they're actually going to do a remake, but I was going to be, I was like, I'd be shocked if they didn't go and pull Heather Donahue back and do the same thing they did with Jamie Lee Curtis and try to recool the bitch no and be like, oh, I, we actually we found her in oh. the woods days later. We never told you. And she's going to lead a new group and she's going to be like, this is how it's done because I was there for the original. Maybe we can talk to her in October because they're supposed to be there. Uh, in, dude, I would. I, that's exactly what I was thinking of. And by the way, if you guys are planning to go to Scarefest, please go. We are going to be there. It's official. Um, more stuff to come from that for sure. But Heather Donahue, Donahue is going to be at Scarefest. And yeah. I would actually love to meet her. I would, I would love do. to interview her, dude, on the show. We <laughs> I'll look, yeah, dude, I would love, I'd be like, listen, we were young. I thought you were fucking dead, dude. I thought you were like legit dead. I thought, I thought, you, were say, I thought come... you had a nice butt. No, I, no, I saw your butt on camera and you were like dirty. They focused with... on it for so long. I was like, well, it had like dirt on it. And I was like, oh, she's got butt crust. But I was like, oh, it's just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that goddamn butt. But no, I like, yeah, like, but yeah, maybe we can ask her about that. <laughs> how she feels. Because those guys, the, the original actors that did Blair Witch, man, they went through fucking hell. Like, Mm. You know what would be really, I'd love to see, I'd like to see a documentary on uh, like the actual making of Blair Witch and like them go back all these years later yeah. and interview we everybody that, that were a part of it. And because those guys, like they were talking about shit that was crazy. Like they were like, wake up and they would get part of the script outside of the tent. And then they would just act out that part. And they had no idea what was coming. Yeah. Like after that was, which is genius. Insane. And that's the kind of shit they're not going to have the porcupine to do today. I don't know what that means. They're not going to have the, the porcupine. Prickly they're dick. not going to have the balls to do that today. Dick, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying it was great for them. I'm sure that was horrible, but it was probably sort of fun too. But there's again, like, if you want to remake the Blair Witch, what you should do is you should tell a whole new story and you should try to recreate the marketing behind the original movie by I trying to put it. something out there that's real. Um, trying to pretend that something, pick a true crime story fashion some uh found yeah. footage do a sci-fi special we found this tied to this original thing like do something ballsy and new but like just to remake the blair which is so fucking tired and thoughtless and just dumb yeah you it's know it's, it's it's uh it's uh it shows creativity has been bankrupt in hollywood for quite a while i mean that's yeah. what it is yeah, like make a sequel. Like I don't give a fuck. Blumhouse wants to make a sequel. Make a sequel. I'm not excited because it's Blumhouse, and we kind of know what they've been putting out lately. But like to, to say it's going to be a remake is just so. Oh my fucking god, that's going to be well, so. First bad. off, it, does, it it fits the narrative though. I mean, Blumhouse thought they were going to reboot. And I know that like The Exorcist. Like you're talking about one of like maybe one of the best made horror movies ever. Period. Yeah. From the beginning to the end, pacing, lighting. Uh, cinematography, acting, that movie, uh, and even hor non-horror fans will say that was a fucking great movie. Like, that was just yeah. a great fucking movie. And you don't get that kind of praise often in horror. Yeah. And they, thought, they had the fucking dick to say, no, 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 we can remake it and it's going to be awesome. Yeah, no, and you're wrong. Courtney just said in the comments, he's like, I like the black phone. They're they're okay at making new films. And that they they that actually dude, they've been sucking at that lately too. Like if you watch oh, Imaginary yeah. and Night Swim, they have like throughout the years, if you go back through Blumhouse's filmography, they will put out like banger 12 shit fucking films, banger 14 shit fucking films. And now it's gotten to the point where it's like banger. That was four fucking years ago, and that's all they've done is shit well, film since. You know, I also don't Black Phone, I, the only one recently that's been any good whatsoever. And, and again, I didn't like it necessarily, but I like I appreciate that it was original and they did their own thing. And they're I, ruining their own movies with their marketing. Black Phone yeah. would have been so much fucking better if they hadn't ruined it in the marketing. But they're using Universal's marketing team and Ryan Turek and all of them are like, "This is how trailers are made." Bitch, yeah. look at fucking Alien Romulus and look at what the first Omen did with their trailers. You don't have to give the whole movie away in your trailer. But you guys are someone's in someone's ear and they're just fucking them up. It's like an angel in the outfield. Less is more. Yeah. Less is more. But here's 100%. the thing. At the end of the day, I, I want people to understand that we're not. I, I know it, it sounds like we're just shitting on Blumhouse like uh, unfairly. But, you know, they have had strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. And it's been a pattern. So until yeah. they get back on track and start doing things a little bit differently we're not saying i mean they're capable they're obviously and they've shown that they're capable of doing some great stories and some great movies and i hope that they do but right now it just seems like they're doing the most basic ass level of uh, uh work to make these movies and just yeah. that they're banking on nostalgia to get and I'm people not in the movie dude i'm not trying to toot our own here horn 
<laughs> I'm not trying to toot our own horn here. I'm really not. But honest to God, if you look back at the track record of this channel with shit like this, when it comes to Marvel, we said for fucking years when everybody was blowing, whether it was the Eternals or whatever, everyone was like, you cannot question Marvel. They have a great track record. Everything they do is golden. We were literally sitting here saying like, Dude, like you're using what your successes of the past and you're putting out turds on a toilet right now and people are eating it up because they feel like they have to because of what you've done in the past. That's going to run out. And guess what? It ran out with Marvel. We've said wow. that about uh, Warner Brothers trying to copy yeah. Marvel. And guess yeah. what? They figured the fuck out. Disney, Bob Iger even came out and said, you know what? We need to stop trying to make these PC movies and try to just focus on making good but Bob movies. Iger, Bob Iger is afraid of his, for his fucking job at this right. point, which is great. Because finally, it's putting pressure on a studio to be like, you know, finally, the investors are like, all right, finally, I get this dick juice out of my face. Where's my money? <laughs> That's what investors are asking. I want a return on my investment. And all I see is fucking failure after failure after failure. Bob, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And then Bob, Bob is becoming Bob Morton from RoboCop. I had to get rid of Bob Morton because he made a mistake. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with the emotionless. Meg Mithrigan was all right. It was an okay horror movie. But again, they showed every best scene of Mithrigan in the trailer. So I understand people showing up to the movie that had no uh, that no knowledge of it, enjoying it. But for me, every good scene was in that trailer. And they made it a PG-13 thing, and they did their alternate R cut. Uh, but all I'm saying is that, like, same thing, um, Warner Brothers, like, whatever you want to go with, like movie and i'm not talking about us specifically that we know like all or anything like that but movie fans will tell you like we're sick of seeing this we're sick of seeing this and these studios get to a point where i made this much money so fuck yeah. you blumhouse is on the cusp of fucking falling bad right now their movies are still doing great box office wise but the day is coming man where they're going to be hurting for a fucking score and it. i'm calling it right now I hope like it's gonna become, happen uh, put a chicken in and make her gay <laughs> yeah, that's basically Put a check yeah. in and make her gay. <laughs> that's the South Park. We're trying, to, we're, trying to, we're trying to do Bambi. Uh, <laughs> put a chicken and make her gay. It's about deer. <laughs> I said, put a chicken and make her gay. <laughs> oh, have you heard? By the way, uh, Silver Surfer is a female. First off, no, it's not. That's actually a clickbait rage uh, title. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's Shala. Uh, shallow rat or, or a shot i can't remember it's not it's the his, actual silver surfer it's, it's, no, a... it's his wife norn rad who's the actual silver surfer and in the comic books his wife does become as uh, like a herald of galactus at some point later on it's they're not the, i saw this too and i was pissed obviously and i was like yep i've been led by my wiener head again because a lot of articles were coming out and they were using click uh they were rage click uh titles silver surfer uh cast as a woman that wasn't true at all they're not doing that if they had done that for real i would have been pissed what they're doing she is in the movie that's his fucking wife the girl that they cast is his wife norn rad the aka silver surfer they haven't announced him yet as far as like who's going to portray him but it's it's not they didn't cast silver surfer as a female mm -hmm. but you're right that 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 those get clicks that, that gets, well, that's that, why they the do it. For it. I'm not. Clicks. I mean, listen. I'm all anti woke myself too, and I hate that shit. But like, I can look at like these are people. They're, 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 they fucking know, dude. They know how to get interactions on their videos. They know how to get clicks on their articles. All they got to do is put in "silver surfer vagina" and question mark, and then like people <laughs> are gonna fucking click that shit. Like, what the fuck? And they're not even. They're not even gonna read how the article. You? They I won't even. Scrambi they X. won't read that shit. They'll fucking retweet that. Like you. Fucking woke goddamn fucking pansy motherfucking days. <laughs> I'm tired of Hollywood. And they're like, oh no, it's just his wife. Like, oh, okay, that's cool. He sounded like Dave Chappelle just now. Like, I'm tired of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm I, but I, I I usually am. I have I, I like listen, I got a nose for that woke shit. I don't like it. I can smell yeah. bullshit from my way, but and that was fake as fuck. Like that, they like they casted a woman to play his wife. Yeah, it's not a trans woman or any bullshit like that. It's just a woman, and people were like, "Silver Surfer, she's got a dick." <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know, and he does, and he still does. Dude, that reminds me. Of, hang on, I, I just have to. No, I mean, no, there's extremes. There's extremes point, on both sides. All right, there's extremes on both fucking sides of the aisle. <laughs> 
I, at this point, I have to. I got to show it to you because that's exactly what I thought when you said, "I got no dick." Um. <laughs> By the way, you never saw his dick, even though you should have. He should have been Doctor Manhattan with a big silver cock hanging off of the surfboard. <laughs> but he's got like a Barbie dick. Like he's just got like he he's like, there's no wiener. It's all packed up in there. Listen, listen to this. This is a uh, uh, this was a Tom DeLonge side project, uh, the the boxcar racer. But the it, the song's called "My First Punk Song" and it's just a bunch of yelling and like guitar riffing or whatever. But uh, listen, listen to the very I I moved it to the end so we didn't get copyright. But let's okay. just listen to the end of the song. He goes, "I got no dick." <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, yeah that's how people, when they clicked on those articles they're like i got no dick i got no dick Shala ball <laughs> by the way ball what's her name that's his wife it, it, and it's it's so funny because it just shows you who, who who's not familiar with the character and that they don't read the comics or they never read the fucking comics I again, these people are masters on both sides of putting up a picture on the internet and putting a one, uh, maybe a couple of words on a title uh, Silver Surfer, no dick. <laughs> Question mark. Email MCU. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then they don't even read the fucking article because it says after the first paragraph, so and so has been cast as Shala Ball, and they're like, but they're all mad, and they're like, I'm gonna trick this shit, and I'm gonna fucking retweet that shit, and then I'm gonna put a picture of Trump on that shit, and I'm gonna say, fuck you. Tom McDonald's gonna write a rap song you about this. Communist Islamic fuckers. <laughs> No, but, look there's two I, there really is two there's two different divisions about this and like when you said earlier you're like i'm tired of the like the woke shit too there is that is but it's such a nuanced statement dude because like being tired of like the woke shit which is a terrible word that's been used to describe way too fucking I'm, much I'm but like, like gender driven shit, shit. Right. Yeah. No, but you're, I mean, you're right in a sense because like there's some of that shit that it is true. Like it is true. Like people are doing dumb shit for dumb fucking reasons yeah. that make no sense for pats on the back. But then there's an entire community that's taken that and they'd be like, and they're like, ketchup's fucking gay. Nobody eat ketchup. And you're like, you're going to, you're living your whole life by this. I always that's knew not the ketchup point. was gay. I always knew it. <laughs> yeah. That's not the fucking point. Like sometimes the word woke can be like, people can't, that is a true thing in, in a certain aspect, but people have used it as this broad term. Someone would be like, Hey, did you guys hear the new, uh, they got, uh, Ego made a new waffle. It's got chocolate chips and cinnamon. And they're like, I bet it's fucking woke. That sounds like, gay. Well, come and, on, and that man. sounds gay and pro-black. I don't like it. <laughs> Calm down. Like it's no, not that. Well, serious. here's the thing. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, yes, there is an agenda-driven uh, type of mentality that is going on in Hollywood, specifically Disney, Marvel. They've ruined Star Wars. They've ruined a lot of franchises. And I totally agree with that. I mean, a hundred percent. I think that that has gotten out of control. But there are there are also people that take. Uh, what's going on, and they use it as a grifting type of situation yes. to grow their channel, to grow their brand, to grow their uh, their you know uh, their journal, or, you know their online journals or whatever. You know, I, meaning like articles online. It's very easy to do this and manipulate the facts to fit a narrative that you want it to fit, so that you can sell your brand. And if you're anti woke. Uh, the, that will get you a lot of clicks. If you're, <laughs> if you're also wokey woke, that will get you a lot of clicks. I just feel like I call, like, listen, I call the bullshit out on both sides. I, I fucking hate agenda driven movies. I fucking hate it. I think it takes yeah. away from film. I think, I think it takes away from creativity. I hate the fucking DEI bullshit that, that occurs. I hate all that stuff, but I fucking also hate cocksuckers on the right that will literally grift off the same fucking shit to sell God. Preach, motherfucker. Preach. Art. You're fucking right. No, I mean, I hate them both. I hate them both. I know. I, it's I like, it's both. Like, no, it's like, I, I just wish you both would just like, shut the fuck up and suck that dick that you've been in the closet about all your life. Okay. And it's just get over shit you ever said. I love I, everything you just said. Is no, so but true. I mean, but I, but I, I know, but like at the end of the day, I want people to understand that 
that that that silver surfer thing was so fucking stupid like it was so obviously manipulated and people ran away like they oh my god dude i saw so many youtube videos coming out and i'm not going to name the youtube people that were talking about it um the usual suspects <laughs> well no well kind of but not all of them but i mean they but they but they were like and the, i think I woke they up and i smelled gay in the wind what yeah. the fuck i ate some cheerios and i felt homosexual and you know why because <laughs> it smelled gay when i ate it <laughs> uh but no listen i, I honey thought, nut what the no. why you gotta have nothing there am i eating men's cum why's that goddamn bee floating around with it looks like a penis out of his ass <laughs> uh no but yeah it was what it, yeah it's just i i watched the videos and and they were like breaking you know like they, they twisted the whole fucking thing and again i i agree that i don't think that shala ball should be the focus of a fantastic, I want to see Norn Rat. I want to see Silver Surfer. Yeah, but she's an important part of why Norn Rad becomes the Silver Surfer because he becomes the Silver Surfer because he loved his wife and he didn't want his planet to be eaten by Galactus, and he gave himself up as a, as a herald and became the Silver Surfer. So it's just background story. Like that's all it is. Side note: If I make a T-shirt that says "Ketchup's fucking gay," would you guys buy it? You should. Because I kind of want to make but one. Don't like, say I can like, make it don't, don't spell it with K. Ketchup's fucking gay. No, no, no like, don't spell it with K. Don't spell it with catsup. Ketchup's fucking gay. Catsup gay. <laughs> I might make that shirt. I might. I might. Actually, I'd wear it. But no, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, dude. I saw People get that so shit. confused. But I mean, and they do it. They do it on both sides. But I just that's the most recent thing I saw. Like that grifting is insane right now. Yeah, no, it's it, dude. It's it. People just make a living off of it, and, and it makes everyone so mad at each other, and makes them hate each other, and it's so dumb. It's such a stupid world that we live in these days. DJ Graham says that the reason there's no tits in the Scream franchise is because no one is legit or legit. But <laughs> the guys hashtag Nickel Get. I don't know what Nickel Get means. Oh, so you remember saying, uh, you saying Randy's everybody, like everybody's a lesbian? No, remember in uh when, when Jamie was like. There's like I want to see Jamie Lee's breast. When do we see Jamie Lee's oh, breast? Yeah, and then, and then right. uh and then he was like, he was like, she didn't sew her tits till she went with the jits. <laughs> oh, she, she, she a real free. one for that though. She a real one for that. <laughs> uh yeah, that's true. I don't know, man. I, I never I I guess I it is so interesting that you said that though, because I never really thought about that. Like and all the horror um, you know, th you know, uh thriller movies or whatever i i think what, what 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 i'm trying to say uh horror slasher films there's always been tits there's always been a focus on sex and tits or something and yeah yeah you're right scream didn't have any of that just proves that you don't maybe need it, it would have been better if it did i saw some people that were arguing that like uh <laughs> shut up i get it i like scream I one saw, shut the fuck up i saw some people that were saying that like when the winnie the pooh movies and shit were coming out i think it's awesome it's chicks and bathing suits and and death and i'm like dude like uh, you realize uh, the, that porn hub's uh, a thing like but that's another reason why like you really don't need the tna in horror movies today because in the 80s like people would watch those movies for like partly for the sex scenes and selling porkies and shit like that because like porn wasn't like so readily available. So it, it was so much more risque to have it in movies, you know, uh, you these know, days listen here, there's man. no uh, point in having personal foul, movies. uh 15 yard penalty on Mike. Uh, <laughs> I have repeat, no problem uh, with it. Third down. I'm just saying, like no, you know, like like well, back then it was like, oh my god, titties. You don't today. Need, you can see titties in two seconds on your phone. You can of anyone I, you I want. Think, I, yeah, it's my not titties are probably on here. It's not necessary for a horror film to be successful, you know, like with TNA. But yeah, like li listen, sex sells, and a lot of those, you know, the slasher films are always revolving around like you know young hot girls that are, you know, just now right. graduated from high school and they're fucking, you know, tits out, like they're fucking ready to party, boy. And like, you know, whatever. <laughs> D-Land said, your feet are on here tonight, literally. Yeah. Well, we, we're we not good, so we have to use what we have to sell, okay? Yeah, we can't be like fucking uh, Amaruth on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, do, hey, listen, do not get me lost in that movement of, of like uh, Gen Zers or whatever the fuck it is that are like, I don't see the reason for sex in movies. It makes me uncomfortable. Like, no, sex no, in movies stupid. needs to exist. Sex is a part of life. Adults have sex. Adults curse. Like, this is the real fucking world. Get the fuck out I can't over. believe that, that, that actually was a statement made by someone with human lips that said that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, well, here's the thing. The reason why sex exists in, in horror films and why you see it is first off it's hot and they know that and it's gonna sell but they also 
uh, in these slasher films, the victims are always doing the dumbest shit you can possibly do. Yeah. Like in the middle of like a murder situation, they're like, I won't do you dog style, bitch, in this bathroom. <laughs> you won't die, but you're going to get your nut off. Like, is it? It's all fun. You know, and by the way, this is made for uh, people. It's, it makes me uncomfortable. Well, that's because you've never had sex and that makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> probably. That's Actually, probably you know, why it makes you uncomfortable. I want to, I just want to sort of take a quick second to retract my statements because honestly, like aside from them even getting taken out of context, that was a dumb thing for me to say. Whether you can get tits on your phone or not, uh, having them in movies is still fun. And yeah, if you have I, a boring I, moment in a movie and you have a nice sex scene, that's great. Yeah. So when I, well, forget everything I said, put all the I was sex in all the no, movies. I, no, I, I knew what you were saying. Like, well, here's yeah. the thing where I cross the, where, where I like draw the line and I'm like, Dicks too, though. Show us I will dick. take France. Oh yeah, I'm from France. Never mind. Can we can we I have take, a little bit of dick that's not just old dudes floating around in Ari Aster movies? Can we have some nice dick I, pics? You know, come I, on. Here's where I draw the line. It, it, and it doesn't make well, it doesn't make me uncomfortable, I guess. But it, like, well, kind of does. And then I'm like, it doesn't serve a purpose. Rape scenes in films in horror Fuck movies. It. Get it out. I would say specifically, I think that's kind of dumb unless it really does serve to further the the plot of the movie and it makes sense for the movie to have it in there. Yep. Like if it doesn't make sense for it to be in there and you're just doing it for like shock value, I think it's kind of fucked up and nasty. Yeah, and it kind of takes me out of the out of the movie. Um, I'll have a hard time again, ever I'm, respecting Rob Zombie again after what I well, saw and the like, rejects well, and the Halloween director's cut. That's just that's that's sick. Well, some people are going to defend it and they're going to say, "Well, it makes it it makes it make sense because they're so nasty and that you know Michael has become like a hero of sorts, like by doing like you know killing him." But I'm like, "Yeah, but it didn't really need it. Didn't further the plot. It, it, like it didn't do anything except be in the movie and like be disturbing just to be disturbing for no yeah. other reason to make you uncomfortable." And I, I get the point of some horror directors are to make you feel uncomfortable. They want to make you feel disturbed while you're watching a film. And I get that, too. But this particular movie, spe specifically the Halloween remake, it didn't need to be in the like without like the director's cut or not the, the theatrical cut without that in it was fine. Yeah, it showed it didn't need to be in the fucking movie. That's why it was cut. Yeah, because it was dumb. So I that's where I would be like. So like rape shit and and uh, pedophilia and shit like that, I'd be like, yeah, I don't know about that. Like I'd be like, it, it really has to be some. It has to be central to the plot and and pushing the narrative forward that makes sense for it to be in the movie. Yeah, if it's not and doing any of that shit. Then you're a fucking weirdo that wants to see it. And look at what Wes Craven did with uh, Last House on the Left. He had it off screen. You could hear it. And it was just as fucking haunting. But, that, but, that, but there was no a vengeance story it. around that. Like that sense yeah. because she was raped and then there was a vengeance story. Yeah, so it was it was pertinent to the plot and still he didn't have to show it. What Rob Zombie's done with some of his films is just, it seems like, you know, to me, to, to anybody, it just seems like you just like to watch that shit and like it gets you off. But like you're putting, yeah, I don't like watching world, that shit. Like, and you're yeah. you're an impressionist yeah. person on like younger people and stuff like that. And like that's just a bad thing. Like that's that's bad. Like that's that's don't do that. And listen, you know? I'm all about pushing the boundaries, and I want to, you know, like of course, I, like like let's like listen, like Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street. You know that deals with pedophilia. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he is. He's a pedophile. And I would, I, I like, I don't need this. You don't need to detail the specific acts for it to be the movie respect. But you can definitely that makes sense the narrative of how disgusting a piece of trash Freddy Krueger is, and what he became afterwards is even more terrifying because now he's a demon that stalks people in their dreams. Uh, he's not only a pedophile now he's he's got these powers. I think they did a decent job of doing that with the. I know people hate on the remake. They did a decent job of doing that without showcasing too much. You yeah. know what I mean? But if you let Rob Zombie, I'm not saying he would do this at all, but if you let certain edge edge Lord directors take scenes like that or take uh, a character like that, they would go overboard in a way that's like, okay, fucking calm down, dude. Holy fucking shit. Put away the right. dynasty and yeah. take a nap. What the and fuck it, are you when, doing? When it's a repeat thing, it's a problem. Like, okay, so so you could argue that. Oh, what about Sam Raimi with the Evil Dead when he had the tree uh, rape the girl? That's like, a that woman. woman that's up? 
that was rape, but she, but it, but it served the plot of the movie. It did in a way because it showed how fucked up it was. It, I, I would agree it's questionable if he ever did anything like that again. Like if every Sam Raimi movie had someone yeah. getting raped by an inanimate object, then you'd stop and go, whoa, what's going on? And when Rob Zombie does it over and over again, you go, dude, is this just uh, it's just like your cuckism was showing your wife naked all the fucking time. Like, mm. what's the deal? Like, like, are you just getting off on your movie? Because like, that's not what I came to the fucking theater for. Like, I yeah, came for a fucking way, movie. I- we're not, not getting, for you to show how fucking mellow you are. Yeah, you know? we're not trying to get on a on a soapbox. It sounds like we are. No, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to limit creativity at all yeah. with directors. I mean, I think that you should explore every possibility and route to make a a horror movie and, and make it effective. But I feel like there should be limits to where you're like, yeah, that's that's probably not a good idea. That's yeah. probably like it, like if it doesn't do anything for the movie overall, just to shock people, it's kind of probably it's probably the wrong idea. And, and and like Freddy Krueger, I would, I swear to God, it, I would want to make Freddy Krueger a disgusting, nasty, fucking human being, like a really gross human being, and that became a monster. To remake that movie, I think that you have to do that because Freddy Krueger is such an iconic pop star because of Robert England and what they did with the Freddy Krueger. Like people forgot about that. I if I were to remake that movie, I'd want to make him gross. Like I'd want to make. Like it kind of weird that you're cheering for him. The, yeah, the remake know, did a little bit of that too. Well, the remake did, but it didn't. It you know, it. I don't want to go. But the, 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 there's, there's a. I'm not. You could just have a character. I'm not say creative what enough. He did. To, I, well, I'm not creative, uh, creative enough to know the way to do that. But I, you can do it without going too far. Yeah, um, I actually agree with you. Like the the simple thing that you would have to do with that whole storyline is just to be like have a character say what Freddy Krueger did. You don't have to show it. Details, you don't have to yeah. live in That's it. Nasty, you don't have yeah. to all that. Like we can all of that. We don't need to. There's enough fucking the Catholic Church alone. You know. You don't. There's no reason to fucking show it ever, yeah. ever. No reason unless someone's getting their fucking sick rocks off on it, which would be a whole new level of fucked up. But anyway, uh, anyways, I, I, I don't. I don't. But guys, please do not think that we're fucking getting on a soapbox and being like. This is the way, and like being self righteous <laughs> assholes or anything like that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I've never made a movie in my stuff, fucking but... life. I just think that there's boundaries you can't cross. Yeah, I think that and... that's. I think there's literally a line in the sand somewhere that you're mm-hmm. like, okay, that's too much. And I think that some yeah. directors flirt too hard with that line, and sometimes they cross it. And if you're asking yourself why you're watching a movie, is the director getting off on this? You're you're doing that. They're doing it wrong. They're doing it wrong. Tarantino with the feet is another questionable thing, but at least that's not like yeah. It's not. It's still not in the same vein. It's like, hey, you're showing someone's fucking feet. You know, like yeah. at this point, everybody knows Tarantino's thing was feet. So if an actress shows her feet, well, we're not all, talking about some new actress. Yeah, we're but, talking but about actresses like showing their, feet, showing their they're feet. They're all, but they're all like all of age. So it's not like yeah. it's fine. If, if they agree to a foot fetish, whatever the fuck, I don't I mean. And it's whatever. a it's feet. I just showed yeah, my feet well, to you guys. It's like not like minutes, if yeah. you watch if you're watching the movie and you're like, damn, dude, R. Kelly could have directed this. I think it's probably a bad move. <laughs> it's probably a bad move. Yeah, you should probably leave the theater. Lyric yeah. Gaming, Roman Reigns should have retained. Just saying, hey, listen, I got good news for you. You can just go back through the past like 15 fucking years of WrestleMania and you could have seen the same boring ass Roman storyline over and over and over again. I don't know what to tell you. Like, what else? What new were they going to do with Roman Reigns as a champion? What what new catch line is going to be? Like, Please pay attention to me. By I have way, beautiful hair. What, Lyric- do you, what do you want? You look like your your profile pic looks like the 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 uh, the, the trapper keepers I used to buy at Walmart and when I was in middle school. Like it would have like those little folders and they would have like a picture of a lion. I like it though. The golf 2K7. We love you, man. I'm just playing with you. Uh, Adrian Yabara always felt like a new nightmare approach to Scream series of work. Then Stu, Randy, Dewey, etc. could return as their real self. Then a ghost face shows up and kills happen during a cast reunion or something. Like, well, yeah, that's almost too obvious. Like, well, but, but that would work, though. That would make yeah. sense. It, that, that's the only... That would be the only venue, and it would make sense how Stu would return as well as... Um, what's his face from the first movie? Yeah, Skeet, Skeet. Oh, Skeet, Skeet. skeet. Yeah. yeah. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Yeah, that would be the that would be the only way. And I was like, you know what? That's pretty cool. If they if they go a new yeah. nightmare route, and uh, and they're like, you know, like the beginning of the movie is like, we're here celebrating the 30th anniversary of Scream, and we have the actors, and yeah. they all come out. You know what I mean? Like, it's and so, it's like, and it's like an on. Oprah thing. 
look, dude, like it's it was so like I know everyone's like, oh, new nightmare, new nightmare, new nightmare was so hard to do, and Wes Craven, bless his heart, did the best he could. But then you're talking about like this mythical being that's Freddy Krueger coming through the script and shit like that. Yeah. With with hello, hello child. Uh, but with Scream, it's so much easier. All you do, it's not its not nearly as complicated as what they were trying to do with New Nightmare. You just have the cast as they are today and have a psycho killer dr like dress up as Ghostface and try to pick them all off. It's so easy. I, like, I, I swear to God, dude, I literally just got the scene in my head, like first fucking moment of, of, of like, like it could be called Scream Final or, or Final Scream, Final Scream or something. If they were, if they really wanted to make it the last scream. Where it's like an it's like an Oprah or an ET reunion show, and you got the guy, you know, the fake host, and they're like, 20 something years ago, we were all shocked and awed by a movie that changed the horror industry, 1996, Scream. And then they, you know, and they're like, let's bring out the stars that made that happen. And then you bring out Matthew Willard and and Ski Ulrich and all those people, and they're all on stage, and they're like, yeah, you know, they're asking questions and they're like, but we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to take some questions from the audience and see what they have to say. And then they, yeah. you get a call and, and you're like, you know, like it's the actual killer that wants to kill them. Dude, and not only that, but you can make it so fucking meta because you could set the whole thing during a comic con, like a scare fest or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you could have all these horror stars show up like a CJ Graham, whoever the fuck you want, they're all in the same building, right? Yeah. And they would they would probably love to partake in a screen movie. So you could have Ghostface showing up, sneaking around a convention, killing off like Tom Atkins and people like that of the world, and literally chasing down these people in a See, horror convention. That's oh what I think. They, that's what I think they should do. I think they should do something like Final Scream, and they should, you know, well, essentially kill off the series by by revealing this meta meta thing, and then. Uh, you know, whatever happens at the end, and then you wait a few years, and then you do you reboot Scream? I don't know. That would be a question a few years down the road. But I think by doing a like a, a like a a meta end of Scream, man, that could the, you like, just call you, it Scream Con or whatever you want to do. I, I think if you do it right, you it could it, it could potentially because you could bring all the stars back. And have them yeah. all, you know, all have their moments of glory, Jamie Kennedy even, and like match up with Scream One, if you do it right. And then, dude, and then, how crazy could it be? You're guessing who the Scream Killer is the whole time. Like, who is the ghost face? Yeah. And it could be literally anybody. It, it could be, be the, Jamie. It could Kennedy. be one of the it cast. Be, it could be whoever. Their motive could be. You know, like it could have something to do with the real life storylines that we've that we've been through in the world. Like you could tie that and make it so meta. It would be the ultimate ode to Wes Craven. Like that'd be so I think cool. So I, I like again, but but that's the kind of shit I want to see because again, you gotta keep is, reinventing Scream in a way yeah. that makes sense. And that's the only way, in my opinion, to really and and some well, they try to do that Scream Three, not really. Like I understand what you're saying, but they didn't mm -hmm. really because Nev Campbell as Sydney, that shit still happened in the universe it, they didn't go meta meta you know yeah. what i mean like they were making a movie based around scream but it wasn't like the the, the actual actors or, or the characters were characters you know what i mean yeah so dude. you gotta do that i think you gotta go meta meta that should be a new fucking word meta meta yeah but i think that works and then and then once that's done you, you reboot the series in a few years. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, def it's definitely a franchise killer of a movie, like, for sure. But if you're going to reboot it soon anyway, I think it's a, it's a step that I they got to go with I eventually. think you wait three to five. Three to yeah. five. Three to and five. Then you, and then you remake it. But that Lee. would be... But that would end it. Oh, my God, Lee! What are you doing? Don't stab us Lee! The God damn it, Lee! I'm going to just grab you by your face. I'm like, cheers. Jackson. love you lee thank you so much dude just want to say love you guys happy y'all are back and when we make our ring debut mike will say foreign objects and jay will say we will rule you and i'll say we will bust you we are the trio <laughs> that will rule the wrestling industry Fuck yeah lee i know i like it and i like it the best because you said it with love and i will only say we will rule you as i jump off the top rope and no one will catch me, and I will fall. <laughs> but that will make it funnier. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, by the way, if you guys don't know what we're referencing, and Lee knows, um, we're uh, ready to rumble. It was a David Arquette film that came out uh, around the, 
I think the late nineties, early two thousands, around the time, the height of the WCW Monday Nitro times. And what dude, again, I will go. Oliver Platt was also in that underrated as fuck. Yeah. Extremely funny, buddy cop kind of film. Uh, and a feel good story overall. I, I, I love that. That movie is fucking good, dude. Yeah, that's I great can't believe movie. it. Well, you know, it, like it's not gr- like don't get us wrong, it's not Oscar worthy or anything, but it, it's fucking it was really good. It's fun. I actually watched Eight Legged Freaks for the first time the other night, and David Arquette was badass in that movie, too. Really He's fucking too. awesome. You're a fucking badass, Lee. We love you so much, dude. Thank you so much. You're the fucking every time badass. I see Lee's profile pic, I'm like, like a rock, strong as he could be, like a rock. It's like, look at that. I got to go pee, though, uh, but right. I will be back. Enjoy your pee. Enjoy your pee, and I'll enjoy Lee. Oh. Just you and me by the sea. I'm going to touch that D, Lee. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> we love you, man. You're the best, dude. Uh, Dan D. <laughs> Sending some support for Jay on a lighter note. Uh, decided to give X-Men 97 a chance based on your review, Mike absolutely blew me out of the water with how quality is the newest episode is an all-timer dude i'm so pumped about the new episode and if you guys have not and like nobody watched that review like for some reason this the world did not want to know our opinion on fucking x-men 97 but i'm telling you guys if you were fans of the fucking x-men animated series in 1997 i'm telling you i'm squeezing your nuts and forcing you to watch it if you guys enjoyed x-men the animated series x-men 97 is gonna blow your fucking dicks out of the water it is so good it's not just like bullshit nostalgia good they take it and they take it a step further it's smart it's got surprises it's a fucking soap opera it's well written the animation's great you gotta watch x-men 97 it's so goddamn good i can't wait to watch the latest episode uh i'm super fucking pumped that you liked it as well dan i can't wait to watch the latest episode thank you man you're the best dj graham you mother fucking fucking fucker you fucking mother fuck i swear to god dj around 2008 9 and 10 i used to watch friday night smackdown with my dad and sometimes monday night raw but i was never in the mood for raw because one most of my favorite wrestlers were in smackdown two it was a fucking monday dude i feel your fucking pain i cannot tell you this is a different time i i didn't watch around the time of smackdown or whatever but I when I watched Raw, it was always I was always pissed because it was on Monday night. Same thing with Nitro, and my dad was always a dick and like, "Oh, you're not staying up till 11. He just wanted the TV because back then you didn't have everybody didn't have their own TV, so um, he was always like, "No, the TV's mine. You're not getting the TV." And he wanted me to go to bed, but the as you know with Raw or Nitro, the best matches are always going to be in the last hour. So I would always have to fight real hard, and it was really it was actually embarrassing. Because, like, I would have to sit and watch the last hour of Nitro or Raw in front of my family. And, like, sometimes they would do really corny shit. And dad, my dad would just be like, oh, this is so stupid. This is just so dumb. You're Girl, stupid, Dad. Day. Drink another beer. Yeah. And I was always like, yeah, just please let me stay up. Please, like, fucking let me just watch this. This shit's important to me. It's still real to me, damn it. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, those old memories, man. It's crazy to, like, to think that some people grew up in the SmackDown era and all that. I have no idea what that must Dude, have been I, like. I, 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 well, yeah, I, I'm on with you. I, I'm, on, I'm on board with you. Like, it was when Nitro <clears throat> was coming on back then, mom would never let us stay up late, <clears throat> ever. Uh, usually, like, we'd always watch, like, uh, we were we had to be in bed on weekdays at, like, um, 9 o'clock, and then we were allowed to watch uh R- rescue 911 and then unsolved mysteries if we were like naughty because we had a t like, my brother and i had a tv <laughs> if in our you're room. naughty if we were naughty we were allowed to you know she didn't check but um when monday nitro came out i remember uh mom never because i think it came on like it was nine right or like it was nine o'clock and it was that it was a two-hour show and what was so fucking it wasn't cool at the time and i, I like now it's like that's genius it would go off like if there was like a big mon- like a monumental moment, like Sting just came out of the you know the you know from the yeah. ceiling, and Saturn <laughs> just fucking jumped over, and like they're gonna have a fight, and then it's like we'll see you next time. There's too much going on, and then, like you know, fuck shit, <laughs> and like you couldn't. There was no internet to really find out, and you had to wait till the next Monday Nitro so they could do yeah a recap. smart yeah they do it was so fucking smart and it was so cool that was like yeah dude that those were so like cool days, but. It's the I, best, dude. I, I wanted I wanted to ask you a question really quick. Since you're a so little quickly before the fog rolls in, tell me that, dude. Like, what do you think 
I'm also a Lillard fan, but he he's a he's a huge Stu fan. What do you think that Matthew Lillard thinks is one of his worst movies that he ever did? Thirteen Ghosts. Yeah, dude, that's true. And Which I agree is fucking you. insane. That, that movie is great, sucks, Jay. No, it's not. That you movie fucking, fucking sucks. Dude, you're crazy. That is, dude, that movie is a great idea, and you're the crazy. ghosts are cool, you're and Matthew crazy. Lillard was great, but that movie is barely fucking Fuck watching. No, dude, that, movie's, I'm telling that you, movie dude. is great because it's cheesy and it's corny in the right way. It's edited and it off from a guy that just did a line of coke off another dude, dude's I want, dick. I want, like, it's, I it's want unwatchable. Matthew I want him to come back from the grave in that movie and do and do a like a Netflix show where you they, how they caught all the fucking ghosts. I it want should to go be back. great. Like it should be great. Like the and I agree the ghosts are cool. The story's cool. Matthew Lillard's cool. But dude, whoever directed that movie directed out of a fucking potato that was high on meth. Well, like that movie is not off, good. I didn't smoke meth, and I was definitely not filming out of potato. <laughs> but no. It, yeah, but that's, you're in the majority. Like I'm the only one, but like I no, that, I, I know, but I, I just watched a recent thing, and someone was like, "Hey, man, I really love Thirteen Ghosts, uh, Matt." And he was like, "I hope to see a sequel or something." He was like, "You have terrible taste in movies. Terrible taste." <laughs> and I'm like, "Fuck, dude, that's a great I, like." Listen, maybe you were underutilized, but and 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 the guy from Monk was like cashing it in, but I, I like. The concept of that movie was fucking. I had the fun. concept, I agree. Like the concept, but I had ghosts. fun. I, I felt like it was like like on uh, like House on Haunted Hill. It just felt like oh. it was it was stupid and corny, but it it was fun. I, I'm in the minority on that. We're at Kyle at ten twenty. By the way, I gotta go. Pepe. I got to go. Pepe. I got to go. Talk to Pepe. So talk to Kyle for me. Okay. Well, I will talk, talk, talk to I, I, Kyle. Talk to Kyle. Me. And uh, we'll see what happens in the nighttime. The ten dollar special. Yes, yes. You want some non bread? Yes. Come, 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 come a chameleon. I want. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Kyle says uh, Chucky told Megan off last night in season three, episode five. LMF LMFAO. Okay. Kyle, I don't, I don't, I've not watched it. I don't know. What you mean? Like he told Megan off? Like, like Megan? Oh, so, like there was another doll that I guess they were like spoofing. That was Megan, and he said, "Fuck you, you animatronic bitch." Right? I don't know, but that's cool. Listen, I'm glad that Chucky's still doing well in the TV show. It's not my, it's not my guy, but I'm glad it's doing well. Uh, Adrian Gabara, thank you so much. Says. Uh, same saps on my Facebook that believe that the Rob Zombie directed Fred series believed and shared ET2 return to Earth. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Uh, reminds me when I used to post fake track lists for albums with producers and features and people fell for it. Yeah, dude. I it was so fucking crazy. Uh ET2 was trending for a while. Like everybody was like, oh, ET2 is happening. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why? What the hell are you doing? And then, yeah, dude, I, I, I'm not saying that Hollywood is not bankrupt creatively to not do that, but I don't think it's going to happen, uh, without like a Spielberg type of like okay to do it. And there's no fucking way. I don't see them doing that at all. Et two, it just fuck that. Like that's so stupid, dude. Like I could. I could get behind Goonies too, which I think it's it would be with the way that they film stuff today. I, I think it would be awful, to be fair. But I could see them doing an, uh, a Goonies two before an ET two. The ET two Return to Earth. <laughs> that shit's so fucking stupid, dude. ET two Return to Earth. <laughs> that shit just makes me fucking laugh. It just sounds like some stupid like. SNL thing, but yeah, dude, people will believe anything. That's true. If you, if you, if you have enough people behind it, uh, dogma, thank you so much. This is random. You guys heard that 2014 Slenderman incident about two 12 year old girls stabbed their friend 19 times. She survived to appease Slenderman. Yes, I did hear about that. Um, to be fair, uh, the Slenderman character that I will sometimes voice is not obviously based on that terrible tragedy. And I only, did the Slender Man thing because I thought he looked goofy. I didn't even know about that when it happened, but I thought he looked goofy and and um, that's why I did it. But yeah, it was awful. Yeah, I, I do. I 
uh, those two girls that did that were obviously insane. Um, and, um, you know, thank God that the, the little girl they stabbed survived. But, yeah, I, I, I remember. Yeah, I know. But I'm not glorifying that. We're not glorifying that, but anyway. But Nighttime says, a civil war was like the purge without purging. Six out of ten. Are you talking about, like, uh, are you talking about, like, the actual civil war or just, like, the Marvel civil war? It was like the purge without purging. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I would say that the real civil war was a 10 out of 10. It purged just right. But the civil war movie, uh, I liked it and it was good, but I only gave a shit because of that end scene between Steve Rogers and Tony Stark. So that was a success. I agree. Um, Michael Parton. Thank you, dude says original ideas that are built upon an agenda is perfectly fine. I'd go see an extreme gay movie day one, but every single IP does not need an agenda. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and, and you're right. Um, original ideas that are built upon an agenda. That's fine. Uh, I 1000% agree with you. If they want to send a message and, and there's an agenda and they want to talk about certain things, fine. Absolutely. Make an original film and, and that's compelling and cool and, and, you know, send it out there and see what happens. And that's fine. I, I, I agree with that, but you, every IP, that's the, that's where people get pissed. Okay, that's when the tampons fill up because people are tired of that. They don't want to see their favorite IPs taken over for an agenda-driven film because they know that nobody would go and see their original crappy idea because they have no confidence in it. So instead of repackaging fan-favorite type of films, a.k.a. Star Wars, or or a comic book you know movie based out of uh, out of the Marvel universe or DC or whatever or what have you, make an original movie and see what happens. Because I mean, to be fair, I think it, it could do well if it's a great story. Because people just want to see a good movie. They want to see a good story. It shouldn't matter or be central to the character necessarily about who they fuck. Or, or, or what they identify as. You know what I mean? Just make a great fucking story. And then, you know, everything else will fall in line. That's my two cents. But you're right. I agree. Um, Michael also says, thank you, dude. Uh, I can relate to movies like I Spit on Your Grave, 1978, uh, which revolves around gang rape. And I use a metaphor, which is supposed to be disturbing. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. And, I, and that was another one that I, I remember uh, as far as like, it makes sense as far as like a narrative of the story that's pushing forward the plot, right? That's part of the story. So it's already going to be disturbing. You know that going in. So I agree. I agree. Um, keep, which one, which one? Uh, Frankenstein Studio. Thank you so much. I met the Blair Witch cast at Horror Hound and they're a blast to talk to. Super chill. Super funny. Ran into them at dinner after the con, and they even came over to say hi again. That's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, they seem like, uh, you know, everyday normal uh, peeps. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting them. Uh, we're going to, like, again, I might mention it. We're going to be at Scarefest this year in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, and they're going to be there as well. So hopefully we can, you know, have some interaction. I'd love for them to come on uh, the show one day and have a little, you know, interview. Because they seem like cool. I would love to pick their brains about th that experience and, and and that you know what they went through and 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 how they perceive things. I think it would be great. But yeah, they seem like really sweet people. Uh, Frankenstein Studios also says thank you. Also says uh, they they said they wanted to do a Blair Witch sequel like Prey when they go through a portal in the basement and get dumped in the olden days when they witness their origin of the witch, Rustin Park, etc. But the studio said no. Um. I could see that working, but it, it, like it's it's it could also be very convoluted and it could get very boring. That time Sex travel shit. Yep. Well, I was gonna yeah. say my wife, but it's for sure. <laughs> but um, I, I, like on my end, on my end, not her, on my end. But uh, you're at yeah. But as far as like them going back in time and 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 seeing time travel works in in, in like in horror movies, but it, it it's it doesn't all like. I think of like um, 
uh, paranormal activity the final dimension is that what it was called when they went back in time and they were trying to tie all this shit together and yeah. it, like it was like i like time travel stories but it was kind of goofy and it was kind of lazy because it's like i don't know how to fucking end this kind of movie we built this up to this far and now we're just going to go back in time and act like the, these this was the story all along i don't believe that um I don't believe you that you're not into men because New am. York has sometimes been inside of you. Sometimes you said, said it was a good time. I'm waiting for this so. marriage to end, and then it's going to be a whole new ball game. I got my Richard Simmons oh. skirt ready to go. Oh, I'm uh, here. I'm queer. Stop by sometime for a beer. Start uh, back. Michael uh, also comes in. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, says uh, 1950. Says I'm so sorry for your loss, Jay. I'm lucky to have you guys as friends. I've always had your backs, even at times like this, and I will continue to do so. You guys mean the world to me, and I love you guys in the chat so much. We love you too, Michael. And that's a very sweet thing to say. And and uh, thank you so much for for your words. Uh, yeah, you know what? And I will say, uh, I, I appreciate everyone that has said, um, you know, uh, given their uh, their uh, sentiments about what happened uh, recently. I and I am going to apologize to if I came off as callous or whatever. If I were joking about certain things, I, that's just how I deal with certain things. I'm not. Obviously, you know, it was it's it is painful and it is, it's it's very emotional, but I deal with uh, things like that in, in, a, in a comedic way. But I appreciate all the fucking words. A hundred percent. You guys are awesome. You guys are very sweet. And um, thank you guys. You guys are support me everything to me and Mike. And uh, yeah, just thank you. And, and I don't I don't want anybody to think that I was, um, you know, oh, he don't you know, he doesn't care. It's not like that. It's just one of those things. It's like you gotta, if you don't laugh at certain things, if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I 100% second that. And I think that's, first off, I think it's really fucking cool. And I, I'm happy as shit too. Like, I've had a blast tonight. Like, it's weird because, like, we haven't done like one of these streams in a couple weeks, you know? Yeah. And, and like, it's, I was even talking to Katie about that earlier. It's like, it's only been like, you know, 10 days or something like that. I, I haven't been that long, but it feels like fucking me. I couldn't imagine what it would be like if, like, we didn't do this anymore. Yeah, you know, because yeah. like coming back here and doing this tonight has felt like just like it just feels like home. I'm home base. I'm at home base now. Like it's a it's a it's it's yeah. it's fucking cool. And I'm 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 so thankful, like on my side of it, for all the support that you guys give us and 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 more importantly to Jay. I think it's the coolest fucking thing. We man, we this this whole thing's so fucking cool. And uh I'll shut the fuck up because I don't want to get emotional either. But I, yeah, love you guys I feel so like Michael much. Michael J. Fox, uh, Fox in Back to the Future when he like he actually gets back. To 85 in the first one, yeah. he's like, everything looks fucking great. Everything looks great. Oh my god, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So uh Frankenstein Studio also uh says uh at uh, 1052, the new nightmare scream should be called stab. I, I feel like that's too much. <laughs> uh, I think that you're you going to calm down, Frankenstein. Calm down, dude. Step out of the studio and breathe some air. I don't think that's yeah. a good idea. But who knows? I, I think I, I just think like eventually someone's got to do that with that franchise, though. Whatever they name it, Aaron will just sky just able to join. Sorry about your loss, Jay. Thank you, man. Hey, appreciate thanks. you, dude. Appreciate you, dude. Thanks for showing up at all, man. And the, and the whole replay's there. Uh, we're having a fucking blast, and I hope you guys are too. Moda, guess who's back? Who tried to kiss? Stop flexing on me, Moda. <laughs> who tried God to kiss? We already know you fucking buff. Who you trying to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> Mota says, "Is there going to be an after party at Scarefest? If so, invite me. You're invited. Consider yourself." Yeah, invited. actually, it, well, kind of cool. Uh, we're going to be at the VIP party on Saturday. Yes. Yep. Um, which I don't know the actual uh, date, but it's going to be on a Saturday at the Manchester Hall. So we're going to be there at least for an hour. <laughs> probably longer. Probably longer <laughs> yeah. than we should. That's uh, what I told them. I was like, "Trust me, if if we're there." If we're there, we'll probably be there until they close the book. Or they're going to say, yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. uh, but we will do uh, we will do some sort of meetup as we always do. Whether that's incorporated into the Scarefest this year, we don't know. I don't, and we don't know how that'll go. That'll all be worked out. But we're definitely going to be there. We're definitely going to be at the after party. We're going to be there on Sunday this year, uh, more than likely. That's not 100% for sure yet. But, like, yeah. Uh, it, I think this is going to be the best Scarefest yet for us. So I hope you guys come. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm, I'm going to be bringing my Galatian Bibles and handing them out. Yes. Many. Is that called? Is it Galatians? I can't remember. You don't know, like that. The, those little no. tiny, the, those tiny Bibles that they give in hotel rooms? 
the um the Gideons, the Gideons, the Gideons, <laughs> Galatians. Yeah. Those goddamn Gideons. Stupid. Goli- <laughs> is it Galatian uh, fucking food? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the Gideon Bibles. I'll be handing out the Gideon Bibles. I only awesome know about note. the Gideons for Mission Impossible because that's how he catches them. Because the the Bible was placed by the Gideons, it's like those goddamn Gideons. They're everywhere, <laughs> dude. <laughs> uh, Frankenstein Studio says, "Is there going to be butt stuff at Marika's again during Stairfest?" Um, I don't know if it'll be at Marika's again. We're, we're we're figuring a lot of stuff out, but it's, it's going to be cool, man. Whatever it is, it's going to be fucking awesome. You know, and butt stuff for sure. You know, way too fucking much, dude. <laughs> way Stop sharing. Too much. Stop. Stop talking. sharing. Those are personal things that we do alone with you guys at the night. Jimmy gonna stay on the been watching since 2007. My first super chat. Love oh. you guys. Stay strong. Jay, the Wham fam is here for you. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, dude. And and thank you for uh for super chatting. And I would totally buy your cereal. From your <laughs> I, profile want, pic. I want some Jimmy O's. Yeah, those Gancitos. <laughs> Bootios. I don't like that. That Gancito is chocolate <laughs> with a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and, and backing off what Jimmy said, Holly said, neither the stream tonight. It's my natural and I'm depressed. And I just want to say it is the same for us. I have sure. such a fucking blast doing this, man. Really we fun. miss you guys so fucking much. We almost we almost came on and did random streams a couple times throughout the week, but you know, felt inappropriate. And then and then but we're we're so fucking psyched, man. This is so fun. We we love you guys so much. And you guys, whatever you guys get from this, I promise you, Jay and I get twice as much. Uh, yeah. that's the fucking truth. So we love yeah. you guys so much. Thank, thank you guys. That. Yeah, thank you guys, and uh, thank you for all the well wishes. I don't have social media, but Mike relays all that info to me. That yeah, uh, from Twitter or or you know Instagram, Snapchats. Even though some of you send dick pics, why you send sentiments? I Which send it, Jay my own dick pics, and I tell him they're from other people, but I just want Jay to see it. You know, sometimes expected. I wake up and I'm like, Jay needs to see this, and he's yeah. like, why? Why does like there's so many different names that send different uh, the same dick and I'm like I don't know what's going on it's weird but they're really just my dick Dicks over and over the same again sometimes yeah but, I need uh, yeah but you guys have been great uh, you guys are a great support system you guys are are lovely we and we're we are man uh, we've been doing this since 2012 it's been 12 fucking years and you guys are the best community out there you guys are are always supportive you guys have always had our backs like you know you've mentioned before and we couldn't do it without you and all, every success every milestone that we hit on the channel is all of our milestone i just like that we've created a, a little space for all of our fucking nerds asses to come and, and hang out together so thank you guys you guys are awesome and um maybe my family's running out but i always have you guys <laughs> so thank you guys thank you guys uh yeah, and if we stay any longer, I'm going to get emotional, and nobody wants that. So let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, we love you guys so fucking much. Uh, See you guys. I don't know how else to say it. Good night, guys. Thank you.